and Ms. Beverly Bayonisto. From the Civil Service Commission, we have Attorney Jennifer Timbol. From the Department of Labor and Employment, we have Mr. Jerome Lucas and Ms. Margie Lou Ann Franza. From the Department of Finance, we have Attorney Maria Carla Espinosa and Ms. Vea Ann Cada. From the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, we have Dr. Aniceto Orbeta. From the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines, or ULAP, we have Ms. Miriam Padua. From the private organizations, we have from ECOP, Mr. Robert F. Maranilla. We're also waiting for Dr. Alberto Phoenix of PCCI to log in, and we're waiting for uh, DBM and other representatives of DepEd to arrive physically. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Comsec. Thank you very much for your uh, physical participation today. Uh, this is the, our second hearing on the proposed measure, Senate Bill Number 2022, or the Batang Magaling Act. And uh, the aim of this bill is to plug the gaps in our senior high school level. And uh, during the first hearing, we have discussed extensively uh, what are the gaps, uh, what are the um, uh, issues that we need to attend to, and most especially to remind everyone the promises of K-12, to in particular, in particular, uh, the senior high school program. Uh, just to make it simple, the senior high school program has two promises. You know? Number one is to be college ready. Number two is to be work ready, you know? among many things, but just to keep it simple. And in fact, in the um, uh, DepEd Memorandum 76 series of 2016, it went to the extent of 80% hiring, this launching rate within three months of graduation for learners under the tech book or the TVL track. So meaning within three months, 80% of our TVL graduates should be hired. No, it's a tall order, very ambitious for that. Um, but uh, it goes to show that our senior high school program uh, aims to deliver work ready and college ready uh, graduates. Uh, but I think that is, uh, well, we all agree no, that is quite far from the ideal as of uh, today. Uh, that's why uh, we propose this Batang Magaling measure uh, precisely to address gaps that we have seen on the ground as well as based on uh, extensive research by the PIDS. Uh, I have to give credit to the PIDS. Uh, they generated this, um, kapal nito, Doc, you know? Uh, three uh, researches on senior high school, one of which is uh, an, a process evaluation on the implementation of senior high school. Um, we've scarred the internet for researches on, uh, and eva researches particularly on the evaluation of the senior high school program, but we didn't find anything. You know? So I have to give credit to PIDS for taking the initiative to analyze and evaluate our senior high school program. Uh, this is a package of three, no, Doc? There's, there's the other two focuses on uh, employability, no? But uh, today I will use the implementation no? because we will talk about the implementation. So uh, in the absence of other research materials, uh, we took the PADS research as our guiding document uh, and, and, and um, lifted some of the concepts and principles there and included it in the bill. That's why if you look at the bill, a lot of the concepts there were lifted out of this um, of this uh, document, as well as also personal experiences. I consulted uh, heavily um, our teachers, our principals, our students in Valenzuela City. Uh, Valenzuela City being an industrial city, we have a lot of factories, a lot of businesses there. And um, it's to our interest to see uh, that our senior high school graduates uh, are being employed by our local co companies. You know? that, that's the objective. Eh? Our local companies will hire them. But again, you know, that is much to be desired. You know? so, so today we will go into the... Um, uh, is, it, today is our second hearing, and we have a lot of um, unanswered questions, especially on data. And to have a complete and holistic discussion on the senior high school, we need to put on record some basic uh, statistics and basic data you know, so that uh, we will be guided 
uh, accurately. No? So um, we requested the Department of Education, the Civil Service Commission, the DOF, TESTA, and CHED to uh, particularly um, share with the committee some important uh, information so that we can use that information to further refine the bill. Admittedly, this bill is a work in progress. In fact, last time, uh, Dr. Phoenix of C uh, PCCI pinpointed uh, uh, some uh, issues on the incentives that we need to clarify. And th those are the things that we need from our resource persons. What are the things that we need to clarify, refine in order to make the bill uh, effective? No? So, and uh, we've, we, we sent uh, the DepEd, CSE, DOF, TESDA, and CHED uh, letters to remind them of the information and the uh, data that we requested, and we can discuss those today no, during the hearing. Uh, it's important to discuss that so that it's all part of the records. No? So with that, uh, we will start off with some basic statistics, no, basic data uh, that was absent during uh, the last hearing. Uh, Dr. Sullivan mentioned some numbers, but it's important to put that uh, on record. No? So it's important that we update each other so that everyone's on the same um, the same uh, uh, plane. And um, uh, we'll uh, first start off with the Department of Education. Uh, uh, let's start off with some basic statistics, some of the um, uh, research that you have done uh, in so far as senior high school is concerned. I know that you have created a task force that was shared with us uh, last time, but uh, obviously the task force was created because you saw some issues and problems. No? Uh, in the absence of uh, the mobilization of the task force, let's talk about what are the issues that you've seen and then uh, share with the committee uh some possibilities on how you will address those issues so we'll start with basic statistics and then move into some of the pressing issues surrounding uh the senior high school program so uh, uh, I, uh mr uh, uh Tan tandingan uh, is the one representing DepEd. uh i understand dr sullivan is uh sick no he's not yes, uh available so I hope you came in ready because he was not ready last time. No, so okay. um, hopefully you can uh, enlighten us with uh, some basic statistics on senior high school. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. I'll uh, uh, give you updates on the senior high school basic data, and um, Isabel, uh, my colleague from the department, will also give you the presentation on the tracer study and uh, uh, senior high school updates on other uh, pressing issues and implementation of where the, the screen, the updates on the senior high school. Um, for the senior high school national enrollment for school year 2022-2023, uh, we have around 4,179,644 learners. So it's uh, for all sectors, public, private, including senior uh, SUC, LUC, offering basic education. Then for the public schools, we have Excuse me. For the public schools, we have 2,721,117 okay, uh, next slide, please. Then for the private school, 1,406,315 1, next slide. For the SUC LUC offering basic education, 50,383. For the Philippine schools overseas or the PCO, PSO, uh, 1,829, and we have senior high school for, for ALS, the alternative learning system, 1,348. So in terms of the per track, for the academic uh, track, we have 2.9 million. For the TBL, we have 1.2 million learners. And sports, 6,674. And for arts and design, 15,269. For the comparative enrollment of the senior high school based sector, as you can see, um, um, the comparison from school year 2021 2022 vis a vis the school year 2022 2023, 
mas mataas na po yung uh, mas mataas po in terms of ibig sabihin po uh, from the pre pandemic uh, from the pandemic po mas dumag na tumag, dumagdag po ang ating mga learners from public, public and private if you compare the school year 2020 to 2021 bumaba po yung mga nasa private schools at lumipat sa public schools but as you can see for this school year mataas na po around 354,931 po yung increase natin for the senior high school learners po for the historical enrollment next slide Increasing po ang ating uh, senior high school uh, enrollment uh, except for the school year 2020-2021. In yung sa blue bar po natin ay that's public schools, uh, public lear uh, school learners, senior high school. So increasing po except uh yeah, increasing po in sa private school NPSO ay kung mapapansin niyo the school year 2020-2020 kalaki yung binaba ng uh, ng mga senior high school kasi nag-transfer po sila sa public schools but for school year 2021-2022 at hanggang school year 2022-2023 from 3% ay duma learners from um, 11 percent ng 2018 yung increase niya yung percentage increase of the learners uh, increasing pa rin po yung trend hanggang sa 2020 to 2023 at pinapakita lang po sa right side po the percentage share of the senior high school to the total enrollment so from 10 percent 15 percent na po yung uh, share niya, percentage share niya to the total enrollment of the basic education ng senior high school. For the next slide, uh, the public, uh, ito naman po, uh, naka-disaggregate po by sa public sector at private sector. Mapansin nyo that still, uh, next slide po. Increasing rin po ang public sector uh, Compared to private sector na nung 2020 lang po ay negative 12%. But still uh, increasing ang parehas na both sector except for the school year 2020-2021. Well, yes sir. Well, for the next slide po, uh, it shows po yung grade 12 learners natin ng in TBL track specialization who took and passed the national certification. Um, this is the um, na school year 2019 to 2020 at uh, school year 2020-2021. Overall, we have 97.8%. Mataas po yung percentage of passing who took and passed the national certification po from TESDA. 97.8% uh, ng school year 2019-2020 and for school year 2020-2021 is 97.1%. And um, in terms of the strand for the HE, 98.3 percent out of the 66,605 uh, percent as learners na kumuha 98.3 percent po. For the agri-fishery arts, 98.4 percent. Industrial arts, 97.3 percent ng 2019, and for the ICT, 96.2 percent. So hindi po masyado nagkakalayo yung Dito natin for school year 2019 to 2020, 2020 2021. So this is, uh, yung next slide naman po natin is the regional uh, data po ng ating who took and passed the national certification. Uh, almost lahat naman po ng regions ay 90% pataas po. So in terms of the regional, ano, um, Regional sector, ito po yung uh, regional level, ito po yung by region po. Then, 
for the number of teachers. Next slide. So, next slide po. So again, next slide. Yeah. We have, for the school year 2021-2022, kasi kino collect pa rin po natin school year 2020-2023 ngayon for the number of teachers, we have 74,862 senior high school plantilla. Then for next po natin, ito po yung breakdown ng uh, the total na 878,919. So ito lang po yung breakdown from, uh, from SPED teacher 1 up to instructor 3. Sige po, yung next po. The, for the teacher-learner ratio naman po, for the senior high school, in the average, 1 is to 34 po yung ating uh, teacher-learner ratio. It shows that the teacher-learner ratio are within the planning standards of the department. Next slide po. Ayan. Okay, next po. In terms of the number of teachers, next, by level of education, this is the breakdown of the 74,860 by region. And po yung naka red point yung senior high school number of teachers natin from region 1 up to NCR po. Then for next slide is the teacher learner ratio by region and level of education. As you can see po dun sa table uh on the average po is 1 is to 34, but meron tayong pina, uh, medyo mataas po sa part ng Region 11, 1 is to 40, at saka sa BARM, 1 is to 58. Ang pinakambaba po natin na teacher-learner ratio ay nasa uh, Caraga po and Region 2, with 1 is to 29 po ang kanilang teacher-learner ratio. In terms po for the school building inventory, sige po, next po natin. Sige pa next. Sige pa po. So this is the total number of rooms na kinokolekta po natin sa the school buildings po. For the senior high school po, next. For the instructional rooms, we have 61,839. Next slide po. Ayan. Then for the non-instructional rooms, we have 13,931. So yung regional breakdown po niyan is, uh, ayan po, from... 4,300 ng Region 1 up to the NCR 3,085. So, pinaka po dyan na number of classrooms ay nasa Region 6 po. Next po, for number of rooms po, uh, the 61,839 po. Ayan po yung regional but ito yung total. So, next slide po. That's for the instructional rooms. And next slide. For the non-instructional rooms is 13,931. And yung next slide po natin, the classroom learner ratio is 1 is to 41 po on the average po. Next slide. And next slide po is the regional breakdown po or the classroom learner ratio per region. Mapapansin po natin that still barm po yung pinakamataas 1 is to 60, 64 followed by uh, NCR 1 is to 50 po per um, classroom learner ratio. And the next slide po is the top 10 senior high school with highest enrollment in public. Ito po yung nationwide po. Next slide po. Yeah, and so from NCR, we have the Paranaque National High School Main with 7,799 up to yung top 10 po namin, natin, Tarlac or the Tarlac National High School with 4,322. That's for public. And for the private naman po is in Manila, the Arellano University, one sumulong high school, 1,193. That's top one. And the Top 10 is the Quezon City Southeast Asia Institute of Trade and Te Technology Incorporated uh, with 5,309 learners po. Uh, Senator and ladies and gentlemen, ito lang po yung basic data for the uh, senior high school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Tandingan. Um, thank you very much for that. No? Last time we didn't discuss that at all. Um, 
let's go back to the slide where in the enrollment is going up. Uh, we we I saw that earlier. There's a slide where it's slide five. Do have that? It's a slide pipe. Sapa. In the group? The first one. Sapa. Next one. Yan. 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 So uh, I noticed that uh, enrollment has been surging you know, since 2017. And uh, I also noticed that uh, the surge in enrollment in public school is not cannibalizing um, the private schools. Uh, in 2022, both increased. Tama? Yes, sir. And then if you look at the enrollment, uh, at the peak, the enrollment of uh, private school is at uh, 1.3 million. Uh, but right now it's at 1.4, no? yes, so sir. it's also increased. So in other words, both both um, public and private increased in enrollment. Yes, so sir. that's a good sign. Yes, sir. No, because there's a. Uh, I'm trying to get my statistics, but I know that uh, there's a big dropout rate by the tenth grade. A lot of our students uh, drop out by tenth grade. They don't yes, proceed sir. to senior high school. Uh, for obvious reasons, no. A lot of them go to work. Uh, a lot of them don't see value uh, with our senior high school program. So, uh, but in this part, in this case, I noticed that uh, we're seeing good trends because um, uh, both public and private schools uh, have increasing uh, enrollment rate. No. Do you know any the reason why are we increasing? Uh, have you detected anything uh, particular? Sir, in terms of the increasing number of, uh, so uh, included na rin po rito is the balik aral learner, meaning to say, sir, marami po rin tayong mga grade 10 learners before na bumabalik na rin po sa education system and continuing their um, uh, continuing their studies po at nag -e enroll po sa senior high school. Tapos, mas marami rin po yung nag -e enroll in terms of the TBL, sir. That's the initial uh, uh, data po na nakita, nakita po namin. I told my staff to look at the school age uh, senior high school. Can you flash that? And uh, we just did it now. No? They just... Uh, looked at the uh, PSA data and uh, the participation rate for senior high school, meaning if you look at all the 17, ang, ang senior high school 17, 18, correct? If you look at the, all the population of the 17 and 18 year olds uh, and you uh, compare that to our enrollment rate, lumalabas, let's say for 2022-2023, can you flash it? Uh, it's only 68%. No. Although it's uh, increasing the participation rate, but it's still far from the ideal. And maybe Dr. Urbeta can look at this later on. But we have detected also um, the cohort survival from kindergarten all the way to senior high school is very dismal. No? We'll have another hearing on that. No. Uh, meaning only uh, children who go into school at kindergarten level only 40% survives, meaning 60% uh, nagda drop out sila. No? Uh, so the cohort survival from kindergarten to senior high school is only about 40%. No. It's uh, grade 1 to grade 10, it's 60, so 40% drop out. Yeah, 40%. Yeah. So let uh, on yeah. If you look at this uh, participation rate, um, there are about 6 million uh, 16 to 18 year olds, you know, assuming that is the uh, senior high school age, uh, but only 4.1 million are in school. So meaning uh, only a 68% participation rate. So we're, we're, look, we're missing 40%. No? Uh, that means about uh, 
about four about two million students uh, in in within the age 16 to 18 uh, are missing no? they're not going to school no uh, obviously they're probably working or they're I don't know what they're doing um, some of them probably started early because we have a a part problem with teenage pregnancies so a lot of our uh, female students they drop out and start their own families uh, but then again this is a challenge to government uh, it's it's it should be the goal of government to have 100 percent participation rate uh, of course that will be a challenge you no know? but at least uh, make it to at least 90 to 100 percent participation rate so even though we have a good trend increasing senior high school and you can see also the participation rate here is increasing but it's still a challenge for us to uh, bring this 68 percent to 100 no? percent uh, i just want to flag the uh, the department uh, uh, on this matter you no know? Uh, because senior high school is really uh, something that will enable our our, our youth to become work ready and uh, college ready. You know? So let's let's uh, take note of that. And then um, I also note took note that uh, I think this is on page slide nine. The ones who took up uh, national certification examination. Let's 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 uh, share the so slide eight. Right? Yeah, yeah. Is that the one? No, the one before that. The one before that. Slide eight. Eight. Slide eight. Slide eight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So again, uh, seems like encouraging numbers, meaning uh, those who took up the national certification, uh, we have a 97.8% passing rate, correct? Yes, sir. And so, yung ano po dito is multiple po, in, uh, in every strand po, meaning to say kahit may isang bata po, uh, tapos tatlo po yung kinuha niyang NC is recorded po. Yeah, but, but but basically, meaning if you take up the national examination, 97, national certification, the passing rate is 97.8%. Yes, sir. That's for school year 2019 and 2020. Yeah, more, more or less. It's the same. So that's a quite quite good number. No? It's quite encouraging. Uh, but the problem is how many are taking? No? Yeah. That's the problem. And uh, we also ran some numbers. Actually, they just did it now. No, um, Can you flash this? There are about 486 graduates. Yeah, 486,000 TVL graduates, but only 127 took the examination, no? uh, of which 124,000 passed. So the certification rate versus the one who took is about 25%. Uh, in 2020, 2021, because that's the, late, the latest data that we have, it's about 6%. No? So even though our passing rate is high, which is good, ibig sabihin, those who take up the examination, pumapasa sila, which is good. The problem is they're not taking the examination. I think the problem is not whether they will pass or not because the statistics will show that they will pass. But the problem is they're not taking the national examination. Why are they not taking the national examination? Yes, sir. May mga ano rin po kami interviews na kung saan kasi po yung cost po nung pagkuhan po ng national certification. How much is the is to take a national examination? Based po dun sa... Because based... this, is, this is what I pointed out earlier, dead end sa TVL. Eh. If I'm a TVL graduate, it's dead end for me. You teach me for two years, but if I don't take the national examination... I cannot use those skills to apply for a job because they will look for the certification. No? Um, but uh, if cost is the hindrance, no? 
not the interest but cost, then we should already have some figures in mind. Now, how much will it take? How much, first of all, how much is the cost of um, to take a national examination? Sir, uh, we had a meeting with Testa last uh, last uh, this day, uh, this week yata, sir. Pero ang sabi po is depende po dun sa. No, more or less uh, lang. That's have some from two hundred, sir, up to four thousand plus. Two hundred pesos. Uh, po, up to four thousand plus. Tama ba? And ito in Testa. Kung two hundred pesos. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, we have assessment po na two hundred pesos, Mr. Chair, for security services. So 200 pesos, they can already take the national examination? Yes, Mr. Chair, for a particular qualification po, yung security services. Okay, like for, just, just, um, just but, on the average lang, para lang may working figure tayo. How much is it, if you look at the courses of, yes. of uh, DepEd? No? So TVL, sir. Uh, TV, TVL. Okay. On the average, how much to certify... One student. On the average lang, ah. Well, para may working Opo. figure lang um, Sir, if I can just cite yung sa home economics po, we have an average of 933 pesos hmm. and 37 cents. For agri-fishery, that's 752 pesos and 29 cents. And for industrial arts po, ay 1,403. For ICT naman po, ay aabot po siya ng... Ano yan, yung ICT... Uh, this is around 600 pesos po, Mr. Chair. Yun po yung average natin per sector, Mr. Chair. So, maabot ng, uh, let, let's say, 1,000 pesos? Is yes, that, sir. Uh, is that a correct assumption? Right, sir. So, how much is it to certify the remaining uh, the remaining uh, uh, 75%? No? So, kung meron kang 486,000 students minus 127,000, Magkano yun? Times 1,000. Ito pala. So, my staff calculated about 104 million pesos to certify. More or less lang, di ba? Uh, times, times, times 1,000, Mr. Chair, that's around 358,000. Uh, 358,482. Uh, Kano? Sandali po. 486... Uh, 278 minus 127 970 358,000 po yung katao times 1,000 Mr. Chair. That's 358 million? 308,000. 358 million. 308,000 Mr. Chair. Sabihin na natin uh, 300, just para may working figure lang tayo, 350 million. Yes, sir. More or less to certify all the remaining. So that's not so much. Magkano budget ng TESDA? 12 billion? 16 billion ngayon? For the scholarship, Mr. Chair, but for our... Okay, lahat, lahat. 16. 16, Mr. Chair. Correct? 16. Magkano ang binabalik nyo sa national government? Alam ko hindi nagagastos yan every year. Magkano binabalik nyo? Um, would you... Nagagastos ba lahat yun? Wala pa akong figures ngayon, Mr. Chair. Anyways, but uh, 16 billion versus 358 million is a small amount. If compared to the budget of uh, DepEd, magkano ang DepEd budget ngayon? 700 billion? 700 billion versus 358 is a really small amount. But you give them hope and you give them certification and you give them a high probability of getting employed. My point of the matter there is, in 358 million na kinumpute natin, is an investment. But it's a good investment because if you look at the passing rate, it's 97% ang passing rate ninyo. So why not spend that uh, 358 para makuha na nila yung certification nila and pwede na silang mag-apply ng trabaho. Kasi yung problema, yung almost 300,000 uh, 300, walang certificate eh. And that's one of the main recommendations of PIDS to already for government to absorb the certification. Kasi dead end ang nangyari sa senior high school natin. But then again, we have some encouraging signs. No? Increasing enrollment, high passing rate. Maganda yun. Mabuti kung mababa yung passing rate natin, then problema pa tayo. Kahit pondohan natin, bagsak rin sila. But in this particular rate, let's show that again, 97% passing rate, which is quite encouraging. 
meron tayong good signs to work on. So my, my first proposal, uh, Doc, is to for government to shoulder the uh, national examination, national certification. Whether test the mag shoulder or 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 deped mag shoulder doesn't matter. No, it's a small amount compared to the billions that we are getting. And I, I'll move to include that in the budget this coming year. We don't need a lot to do that. Eh. Lagyan lang natin ng pondo para ma. Ang next question dyan is saan sila i-exam? Uh, but mag-usap na lang kayo ng TESDA on how to do that. no? Because we're talking about close to about 450,000 students. no? But that's already administrative. But my point there is, if I'm a student, libre in examination ko, I'll be encouraged to take my certification. And the probability of getting, uh, of, of passing that is very high. So I think that's one of the things that we can work on this coming budget season. No, okay. yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. The, yes, sir. At the same time, siguro, sir, eh, hindi na siya gagawing optional. If the government will fund the national certification, talagang compulsory na magiging compulsory for the so that the uh, la, la, the expenses na ilalalat ng gobyerno is that magamit sa lahat. Ibig sabihin comp compulsory lahat ng magkukuha ng national certification. Meron siguro tayong a policy, let's say, one-time exam. One time, government will pay. If you don't pass, the second time, you will pay na. Diba? But then again, I'm very confident because mukhang maganda yung ating passing rate. Eh. It's just the giving them the chance to get the, the, the certification. No? And that's one of the uh, re recommendation of PIDS. Yun is one of the most important recommendations of PIDS para hindi sila dead end. And I'm very sure... If they know that the certification is free, you know, yung participation rate natin will improve. More students will be encouraged because instead of going to TESDA, in TESDA kasi you will, well, well, libre na ngayon, ano? but the examination may bayad rin. You know? So the alternative there, you go to TESDA, libre, but the examination is may bayad. Here in our senior high school, it's free and the certification is also free. You know? So it gives, it gives, it sends a signal to our constituents that we're very confident with our TVL program. I think that is the important message there. No? Uh, how, is that something that is, what do you think of that, uh, Dr. Uh, Tan, Tanding, uh, Mr. Tandingan? Yes, sir. Uh, agree po kami doon na mas, uh, mas may encourage po yung mga learners natin to enroll sa senior high school, even sa kahit sa ALS na senior high school kasi uh, yun nga, uh, pre of ano na po yung national certification. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, I know that you will also present your tracer study. Yeah, para before we go deeper into the discussion, um, I, 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 I uh, appreciate that they, they had, um, prepared their tracer study presentation. That is a very important study. In fact, we took a look at that. Uh, it's uh, probably one the first and the only tracer study that was conducted on a national scale. No? So we would like to learn uh, your findings and so that we can... Uh, come up with policy recommendations. Uh, Ms. Uh, Victorino? Yes. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Senator Wynn, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, let me uh, I present to you the results of the National Tracer Study conducted by the Bureau of Curriculum Development of the Department of Education. So this is the first National Tracer Study of the senior high school graduates which aim to determine the curriculum exits pursued by the first batch of senior high school graduates for school year 2017-2018. It also aimed to explore the considerations they made as well as the issues they faced in their chosen paths. Specifically, this study was guided by the following research questions. Number one, what is the distribution of the senior high school graduates of 2017-2018 across tracks? Number two, what is the distribution of the senior high school graduates based on the curriculum exits? Number three, what are the considerations of the senior high school graduates in selecting their curriculum exits? And number four, what are the issues encountered by our senior high school graduates in the different curriculum exits? So in this National Tracer Study, we made use of this framework wherein we considered the influences like the legal framework of the senior high school program, the socioeconomic context of senior high school students, the nature of and needs 
of Filipino senior high school students, as well as the senior high school program, wherein we have uh, four, uh, four tracks, the academic, technical, vocational, sports, and arts and design track, and of course, the senior high school, uh, the senior high school curriculum exits, uh, like higher education, employment, entrepreneurship, and the middle level uh, development skills. So what method did we use? Uh, the tracer study employed a mixed methods approach involving both qualitative and quantitative data uh, collection methods. And with this design, the qualitative data are used or were used to assist in explaining and interpreting the quantitative uh, data. So who were our respondents? Uh, the participants were senior high school graduates of school year 2017-2018 from public schools based on the education management information uh, system. And the, the sample size was determined by dividing the country into four major areas. And these four major areas were Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, and number four is the na national capital region. So uh, this means that we made use of uh, uh, proportionate sampling. Uh, to determine the number of respondents per major area. So we have here the table, okay, the table of the respondents to senior high school graduates per major area. So from each of the major areas, a simple a random sample of six divisions was done, and each division was a representation of each socioeconomic cluster. And this was defined by the Philippine Statistics, Statistics Authority in 2019. Uh, by the way, I, uh, I also would like to emphasize that this study was conducted from uh, January 19, uh, January 20, 1919 to January 20, January 20, 2020. So we utilized survey questionnaires uh, covering the five uh, parts, the profile, questions for those pursuing college education, questions for those employed, questions for those engaged in business or entrepreneurship, and questions for those enrolled in short-term training courses or middle-level skills development, and questions for those not in any of the four curriculum exits. Okay, so the next is, of course, we can see here now the findings. Uh, the first question was, what is the distribution of the 2017-2018 senior high school graduates across tracks? So uh, in the table, you can see that majority of the respondents, which is 53.30%, took the TVL track, closely followed by the academic track, which is 47.92%. And for respondents who took the TVL track, the highest distributions were seen in the, the component for home economics, which is 22.29%. In the academic track, the highest proportion of, of respondents chose gas, uh, which is 21.20%. And less than 1% of the respondents took the arts and design and sports, which is 0.05%. Okay. So here is the distribution. Um, uh, for example, for TVL track, there are nine, 985 respondents, and they are uh, distributed into four components of TLE or TVL, Home Economics, Industrial Arts, Information, and Communication Technology, Agri-Fisheries, Maritime Specialization. And under the academic track, uh, we have 920 and again divided into gas, which is 407, and then Humes, respondents for Humes 203, ABM, which is 192, STEM 117, and the pre-baccalaureate maritime specialization one. For the other two tracks, arts and design 14, and for the sports track one. Okay. So overall, the top three strands with the highest proportion of respondents were TVL, home economics, academics for gas, and TVL industrial arts uh, for uh, TVL for industrial arts. Okay. So what are the the factors in uh, uh, selecting uh, their exits or distribution? We can see here the distribution of respondents according to the factors that influence them in choosing their senior high school track. So uh, it is, uh, of course, you have uh, influential factors. 
Ito po yung personal interest, gusto po nila, a total of 1,418 or 71.83%. Ang sinasabi po nila, they choose the senior high school track because of their personal interest. And then parents or guardian, maybe because of the choice of the parents or guardian, is 281. Uh, also from friends or peers, 194. Uh, national career assessment result is 41. Teacher is also uh, an influential factor in choosing the senior high school track, which is 28%. Meron pong others na sumagot, availability of tracks or no other option or track is 7. Other reasons which were not specified by the respondents, 3. There were undecided uh, 1 and uh, because of siblings, 1, a total of 1,974 uh, respondents. Okay. So, which means that uh, the results reveal that the strongest among the influential factors was personal interest. Of course, followed by parents, then peers, um, national career assessment examination, and then also the other uh, factors. So, may mga sample po questions kami na binigay, specifical, specifically in the focus group discussion like, Kaya po ako naggas kasi po yun yung available na track na nandun sa school. Uh, halimbawa po, natulad po dapat STEM yung kukunin ko, eh napunta po ako sa gas kasi po yun po yung available. So yun po yung mga naging sagot nila. Aside from the survey that uh, we distributed to the respondents, these were also the answers given during the focus group discussion. And now for number two research question, what is the distribution of the senior high school graduates based on the curriculum exits? So majority of the respondents, 82.67 uh, uh, of the respondents pursued higher education, while 197 or 10.22% got employed. Only a small proportion of the respondents are engaged in, uh, in business and 0.42% uh, in middle-level skills uh, development. So you, yun po yun. And then the result of this research question was gathered from, uh, from the survey. So dito po higher education, 1,593. 1, Again, for employment, 197. Business or entrepreneurship, 25. And then middle level skills or short training course, 8. Okay. Uh, next, number three, research question. What are the considerations of senior high school graduates in selecting their curriculum exits? So, meron po tayong mga considerations of senior high school graduates in pursuing higher education. Uh, 1,593 respondents provided multiple reasons in pursuing higher education. And most of the considerations provided by the respondents are internal to them, which are reflections of their future aspirations. So halimbawa po, for the internal factors, 71, uh, 741 respondents, gusto po nila, they want to obtain a college degree. And then 550 po naman, uh, finding a job. And then, uh, meron pong sumagot, supporting their family uh, is 243. And then, uh, uh, yung 229, gusto po nila to achieve their dreams. And then, 134, gain or improve additional knowledge. Now, for the external factors, 21 respondents claim uh, influence daw po ng family. And then 17 responses, values upheld by the family. So, alimbawa po siguro may mga business ang family. Ito po 17 po yung sumagot. And then uh, um, another factor po, external factor is uh, because of the provision for scholarship, which is uh, two responses for this. Okay. Ayan. Okay, ayun. And then, uh, of course, I've already uh, another, uh, as I've said a while ago, in achieving personal goals, it's an internal factor because oh, in, in choosing the, uh, the, ex the curriculum exit, the senior high school graduates who participated in the FGD said they want to achieve their aspired career or dream jobs as teachers, policemen, engineers, nurses, guidance counselors, 
chefs and managers, and to achieve their goals, they decided to pursue higher education. Okay. And then, uh, next. Next slide. Medyo mahaba. Sorry po. <laughs> okay, another uh, study here is the consideration of senior high school graduates not pursuing any of the four curriculum exits. So while this study highlights the four desired curriculum exits, it is also impar imperative to recognize that there were 104 respondents did not pursue any of the four exits. These senior high school graduates provided multiple reasons. Uh, number one po, financial reason is, as I've said, is the most cited concern. Other considerations given were lack of support coming from the family. Another is pregnancy and lack of interest. Yun po yung kanilang mga uh, considerations kung bakit they did not choose any of the four curriculum exits. Okay, for research question number four. What are the issues encountered by the senior high school graduates in the different curriculum exits? So uh, we have here the different issues. Number one is the difficulty of subjects taken in college. So parang nakikita na po nila na parang mahirap po ang mga subjects in college. So the participants mentioned that they encountered difficulty in the subjects that they are taking in college and they attributed it to the lack of preparatory subjects in the senior high school. They also believe that they should have been relevant subjects in senior high school which they could have taken to capacitate them for their courses in higher education. Okay. Uh, another is non-crediting of subjects taken in senior high school. So in a discussion paper, or um, uh, ang uh, pinupoint out po nila dito is that uh, meron daw misalignment encountered by the participants who went to college, such as non-crediting of senior high school subjects in the requirement for uh, uh, to take bridging courses. And these issues are uh, considered and uh, they took note of how HEIs capacitate their students to deliver the expected skills in the subjects they take. Okay. Another is the travel-related concern. Um, um, uh, those who decided uh, to pursue or not to pursue a college degree was the distance of their respective schools from their homes. Okay, some concerns are related to travel time and security during travel. So, yun po sinabi nila. Okay. And then, uh, uh, there are also issues encountered by senior high school graduates in employment exit. So, one of the main goals of the K-12 program is to uh, make its graduates ready for employment. However, the reality faced by the first batch of senior high school graduates suggests suggests that more should be done to ensure uh, the achievement of this goal. And for one, there is an evident preference among employers. Sabi po nila, there is, a, uh, there is an evident preference among employers to hire college graduates. And uh, uh, the participants lamented that when they attended job fair. So yun po sinabi nila, when they attended the job fair, their applications were not considered since many companies in that job fair were looking for college graduates. Okay. Uh, and then, meron din po tayong issues encountered by senior high school graduates in business or entrepreneurship exit. So, the K-12 program also promises to prepare students to become entrepreneurs. From the pool of respondents, the business or entrepreneurship exit was a less popular choice compared with employment and higher education exits. And among those who chose this exit, the issues that are related has to do with handling customers as well as budgeting business experiences. Okay, so meron pa silang sagot. Actually po, sabi po nila, Max, actually po, marami pong halos magka-age magka namin mga kabataan na halos 
uh, patok ang online selling. Kaya lang po, hindi po madali ang magpag-usap sa kanila. Kasi po, may mga customer po na gusto ganito, gusto ganyan. Tapos, o-order po siya, ma'am, tapos biglang ikakancel. Kaya, nadi-discourage po sila to uh, uh, pursue or to engage in business. Okay. And then another, sa pag-budget ng pera, kasi minsan kasi masasyak ka na lang, hala, nasaan na yung perang kailangan? Hindi po namamalayan kasi minsan nakukuhanan ko po kasi kulang. Okay. I am having difficulty with budgeting. I sometimes shock because there is more man. I'm okay. Yun po nakukulangan daw. And then issues encountered by senior high school graduates in middle level skills. Um, uh, similar to those who decided to pursue college degree, some respondents who took the middle level skills training exit had issues with misalignment of their senior high school track with less the course. For instance, one of the respondents who took gas in senior high school decided to pursue a training course in masonry. And in addition, the respondents commented that their senior high school training should have prepared them for their skills training in TESDA. Okay, so yun po yung kanilang uh, mga sagot yung mga findings doon sa four questions that we gave and then we were able to uh, give recommendations for this so because majority of the senior high school students are interested in the tvl track the DepEd can develop a policy to strengthen the alignment of tvl curriculum with the four curriculum exits develop a core curriculum standards for entrepreneurship to be reflected in all tvl curricula Coordinate with TESDA to avoid duplication of middle-level skills competencies in the different areas. Uh, monitor the implementation of the work immersion program. So a significant number of senior high school graduates choose to pursue higher education. Thus, a national assessment to evaluate to readiness, the, comp uh, to ready the, the readiness and competencies of our uh, students for the demands of a college education, which should be developed. Okay, and since 10% of the senior high school graduates choose to pursue work after their graduation, the DepEd should coordinate with DOLE to ensure that senior high school graduates, especially those below 18 years old, are protected from unfair labor practices. And since 5.39% of the graduates did not pursue any of the four curriculum exits, school guidance program should be strengthened. Local schools, especially the school guidance counselors, should continue to coordinate with CHED, TESDA, higher education institutions, and other companies to develop a career orientation program for senior high school students for them to have a clearer idea of the curriculum exit they should pursue. Okay, and finally, there is a need to evaluate the implementation of the senior high school curriculum to examine the gap between the intended and the implemented curriculum. And the curriculum content must also be aligned with the curriculum exits. So which means that this is to make sure that the four curriculum exits are reflected in the curriculum uh, standards and competencies. That's all po and marami pong salamat. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Victorina, for that uh, very um, uh, enlightening presentation that was actually missing uh, during the first hearing. And I truly really appreciate uh, your team for uh, sharing with us uh, a snapshot of the Tracer study. Uh, can you just submit to us the full Tracer study so we can uh, also uh, study it ourselves? Uh, but the presentation gave us already a flavor of what our senior high school students are encountering. You know? And uh, hopefully you can do this on a regular basis. I, I believe this is only one, no? if I'm not mistaken. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, but uh, we uh, uh, have plans. Actually, uh, we have included in our work in financial plan um, another tracer study. Uh, from 2018 to present. Yeah, because, because the, 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 it, it's it's good to implement this on a regular basis yes. because you see yes, the results of your recommendations, whether they are being implemented or not. No, and um, for for us also policymakers, it's also it also gives us some idea no, on what legislation to propose, uh, how what policies we can recommend in order to address the gaps. Uh, that our senior high school students are experiencing. Um, at the end of the day, we're doing this so that our senior high school graduates will be productive, whether they go to college, they go to, um, to work, 
no? uh, using their TVL knowledge, uh, they're productive. That's what we want. No? And, and uh, it's important to hear their voices. No? Um, so I, I'll go to some of the points that you raised uh, um, earlier. Um, Mr. But Chairman, can I just, yeah. can I yeah, just me, say hello to everyone? Yeah, let me acknowledge, I was going to say, let me acknowledge uh, the presence, the online presence of Senator uh, Pia Cayetan, who's a, a staunch advocate of uh, education in the Senate. Senator Pia, any any opening remarks or questions to uh, ask our colleagues from the? Uh, no questions yet, um, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to say good morning to everyone and thank you for having this hearing. Um, I'm listening intently. Maybe later on at the end, we say just all the info. That's the time I give my comments. But I just want to share, Mr. Chairman. Um, I visited Tuloy San Don Bosco yesterday. Uh, my interest, as you know, is uh, um, a little bit uh, uh, biased for sports. No, They have a very good sports program. But Tuloy San Don, um, Don Bosco, as I think most of the experts will know, has really been the pioneer in tech talk, di ba? Hindi pa tayo ng senior high, hindi pa yata na uso, hindi pa, hindi pa talaga na boom si Tesla. Nandiyan yung tech ng, uh, ng Don Bosco. So I think it would be an interesting um uh, in uh, not just an ocular, but to observe. Because uh, without going into the details yet, because as I said, my, my purpose there was primarily to look at their sports facilities. They're also now training coaches. Um, nung nagkaroon pala ng senior high, nagulo sila, kasi matagal na silang may tech book, Mr. Chairman. Matagal na silang may graduates ng tech book with the, the current 10-year program. So nung nagkaroon ng grade 11, 12, sila pa yung hindi na-accredit kasi wala pa silang grade 11 and 12. And yet, I think everybody will know na they've been churning out textbook um, graduates quite successfully. So parang may disjunct talaga, di ba? Uh, sila pa ngayon yung na, na left behind in that sense kasi napilitan sila magtagtag ng teenagers. And if I may speak for Senator Allen, that's always been his concern, no? Nagdagdag tayo ng two years, how, re how, how successful were those extra two years of education. Because so that's all we want, Aman, diba? And that's why we're here to listen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Pia. And uh, I agree that Don Bosco has been a trailblazer in uh, the TechVoc uh, program. Uh, even prior to K-12, I, uh, I, I, I've been hearing a lot of good things about uh, how they um, how they launched their tech talk program and integrated it with the needs of the industry. And uh, I think it's good for the EDCOM to visit and to hear Father Innocentio's uh, comments on how to uh, reform our tech talk and integrate, uh, integrate it well with our senior high school program. And as, as you, 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 I, I remember also the comment of Center Alan regarding our senior high schools. I think he meant that he made that, he made comments during the budget season no? and uh, a lot of his comments uh, are very valid because we promised so many things uh, when we were debating K-12 program and uh, that's why we're here to uh, to look at those promises because those promises, uh, if those promises are unfulfilled, it will be a source of dissatisfaction from our constituents and as policymakers, we have to address the dissatisfaction and correct those uh, unfulfilled promises. So, thank you very much for uh, raising those very important points. And I'll be happy to arrange, um, Mr. Chairman, the visit to Tuloy Sa Don Bosco uh, for EDCO. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pia. Um, I'll go to the presentations uh, earlier. Um, uh, on page, uh, I think page 10. What is the distribution of senior high school graduates based on the curriculum exits? Um, I'll, I'll take the tracer study as current, no, and um, uh, because in the absence of a current study, um, I'll, I'll take this as what is. I'll take this as the latest study in what's happening right now on the ground. No, uh, so on on page ten, uh, there's distribution on where our senior high school graduates go to no 82 percent they go to college uh 10 percent they get employed uh one percent they become business businessmen or entrepreneurs and less than a percent um get middle level skills training so uh, do, do we have any numbers um the 10 percent they are seeking employment or they are employed no? 
these are very different uh, um, actions. No? Yeah, yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Wynn, these uh, 10.22% are employed. Are employed. So um, that's also quite good no? um, if they are employed. But I also showed earlier, also showed during the first hearing that uh, based on our research, uh, those who are employed are employed only uh, in very um, low paying and low skilled jobs. Now, I'll show us a slide later. And this is based on uh, a research we conducted. This is based on the labor, labor force survey that make it simple. No? Uh, those who are, those senior high schools that were employed, uh, majority, 50%, are in elementary occupations. No? So meaning these are occupations that you don't need senior high school um, uh, education. These are very simple jobs. No? For example, clerks, um, utility, um, car wash, mga ganyan na trabaho. So in other words, 50% uh, of those who are employed are employed in very simple uh, jobs. No? And that's not what we want. No? Uh, we, gave, we added two years. We included in those two years TVL. And those two years should generate uh, senior high school that are gainfully uh, employed. And uh, they are employed in, um, in, in uh, at least decent, no? decent paying uh, jobs. No? But that's not the case right now. No? Kalahate is in uh, elementary occupation and so on. No? These are what we have detected. So uh, in other words, it's good that they are employed, but it's bad that they're employed in, 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 in um, low-skilled jobs, no? which is not the aim of our senior high school. Um, and then let's, let's go back to that slide. 82% uh, in higher education. Um, So it seems to me, you know, just looking at that, that tracer study, that um, our senior high school has two major direction. No? They go to college, which is 82%, no? a big chunk, or they, get, they go find a job, no? uh, which is 10%. Um, uh, no? And the rest, uh, they become businessmen. And, you know, so, but the, the two major tracks, will be uh, employment and um, higher education. But if you go to your slide 12, no? so we'll, we'll dis dissect these two tracks huh? because it's important to know what they are experiencing. Because eh? almost 90% either are in college or looking for jobs. And, and I thank Chad for, for uh, participating here. Uh, physically, because this is very an important discussion. In slide, the uh, findings, finding number four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. We'll just focus on pursuing higher education. Uh, difficulty of the subjects, no? uh, non crediting of senior high school subjects, no? and uh, rejection from the degree program. Itong tatlo lang, let's focus on that because. Again, I, with my opening statement, um, I said that the aim of our senior high school program is to generate college-ready or university-ready graduates, you know? meaning when they go into college, they can participate fully in college. But the, but the feedback that we are getting is hirap sila, no? difficulty of the subjects. The subjects are not being credited, so uulitin nila. And rejection from the degree. And I've detected this also on the ground. Meron mga bridging program. No? And the bridging program adds cost because it's not free. You know? uh, it adds time and it adds cost. No? And apparently, the application of the bridging program is uneven also. Some college, they have bridging programs. And some college, some university, they don't have bridging programs. So for students of senior high school, it's quite confusing. And we also saw in the responses earlier uh, in page nine of your slide, 
that our senior high school students are also quite fickle with their courses. Diba? Let's, tayo, lahat naman tayo doon, naging teenager at 16, 17, 18, we don't know where we're going yet. Eh. A lot of us are fickle in terms of what do we want with our lives. Kaya if you uh, look at their um, their uh, their comments, yung comments, uh, mayroong comments kanina. Halimbawa po, natulad ko, dapat STEM yung kukunin, eh, napun napapunta sa gas kasi yun lang ang available. And um, aside from being fickle, it's also the availability no? uh, of their um, uh, of their of the tracks that they are available. No? Um, if you look at the comments here, actually ito yung mga comments na nakita natin. Kaya po ako nag gas kasi po yun lang ang available na track doon sa school. Naghahanap pa kami ng iba pang strand kaso dahil malayo, kapos ang pera, tapos malayo, parang nag-stick na lang kami kung ano yung nandito. So, what I'm getting from this um, from this comment is there's also issues of supply, no? What is available and that and, and PID has pointed it out in their research. Um, so, my, my point here is kasalanan ng gobyerno na kulang tayo sa facilities, no? Kasalanan ng gobyerno na hindi available yung gusto nila. But when they go to college, hindi natin tinatanggap yung kanilang uh, degree program, no? If they're forced to take a particular track or a particular strand because that's the only one available there. But when they go to college, it's not accepted. Kasalanan ng gobyerno 'yan. 'Di ba? Tapos pagpunta nila ng college, mag-bridging program sila, dagdag gastos, dagdag oras pa. So my, my point there is, we're penalizing our senior high school students or senior high school graduates by adding a bridging program, by adding more time, and by not accepting them to a course that they want but it's not available during their senior high school. No. So that's my analysis here. No, um, based on the comments that I've seen, and also on the ground that I've, because I talked to our our parents also in Venezuela, that's also uh, what I'm getting. That sometimes uh, the interest of the of these of the senior high school student is not in their area, and they're forced to take something that. Uh, that is available there. No? But the problem is when they move to college, uh, whatever they took in, in senior high school is not accepted or not credited. So let me go back to that slide, yung findings. No? So what I'm saying, what I'm detecting here, no, in pursuing higher education, our senior high school students are not college ready. No? Even though a majority of them go to college, but from the reactions that we are getting, they're not college ready. This is based on reactions. No? Wala pa tayong mga empirical studies dyan, no? just purely anecdotal. So I want to ask uh, Ched right now, no? andito si ang, ang, uh, Ched, kay Dr. Francisco, uh, two things. No? Um, number one is, is there any assessment whether our senior high school students are indeed college ready or not? Uh, have, have CHED conducted its own um, assessment? Um, and then, then number two, uh, the crediting of subjects, the rejection from degree because they took up a different track. Uh, what is now the policy of of ched to that effect no because uh it's not the fault of the senior high school students that they don't have the desired track or strand in college it's not their fault no it's a supply issue uh, and, and pids can expound on that later on so what is the policy now because it seems to me that we're penalizing our students but it's not their it's not their own doing no so two questions Bob. First po about the college readiness uh, study, no. Um, 
during the time of uh, Dr. Likwanan as, as chair of TED, she was thinking about there's an informal discussion about doing a college readiness test for graduates of senior high school. Pero it was thought that that will that might be discriminatory because we know na iba iba yung strands that the, the students are taking. You know they're taking different tracks, so you cannot uh, conduct a college readiness test across the board. Uh, so, sabi, sige, wag na lang. Let's just leave it to the colleges, the HEIs, no? To screen those students who are applying and see if they are ready for the programs they are applying, qualified, no? But uh, we know, as you have said, that students are not necessarily in the tracks that they want to go to. One is, siguro when they began, they're not decided yet, they want to shift. Two is, the schools are not offering the tracks that they want, no? So Ched had issued uh, a memorandum. No, the the HEIs were instructed: you should accept any senior high school graduate. So even if they're applying for a STEM course and their track in senior high school is not STEM, that should not stop you from accepting them. But you should provide for bridging the necessary bridging that they need. No, because. When the K-12 was implemented, CHED's policy is, let us remove all the courses that are repeated. Because before K-12, they take algebra in high school, then they take college algebra. So they take English in high school and the English in college is medyo malaking overlap. No? So let's not repeat anymore. But if the students come to us without that preparation, we should be ready to provide that bridging that they need. But you should not use it as a reason to, to reject them from the course, in other words. No? So accept them no matter what strand they took, but be ready to, to give them the bridging that they need. So it's at the institutional level, this is happening. No? And as you said, it's non-uniform. The implementation of the bridging is not uniform. Some HEIs provide the bridging, some don't. No, yung iba ang nangyayare because it's expensive, and the students cannot afford to pay uh, extra tuition for these bridging courses. What they do, for example, is sige, we just review it na lang. You know, you take you take it instead of teaching what we're supposed to teach as their first college course, let's review some of the high school material that they missed. And so things get pushed. And in the end, you don't finish the entire syllabus that you're supposed to finish because you, you fill up some of the time with review of high school uh, material. No? So that was what's happening. Um, I think we were informed before that uh, DepEd administered a test similar to the college readiness test before to see if the students actually are college ready. Uh, but they said that the results of this test will not be a basis for graduation. In other words, even if the students fail this college readiness test, they will still graduate from senior high school. We don't know if that has been sustained. So as far as Chad is concerned, we did not do any study on college readiness, but we knew that DepEd did a college readiness test during that time. Uh, before I con ask questions, uh, Dr. Francisco, Dr. Andaya is uh, raising her hands. I think she has, has something to, she has COVID, so we allowed her to uh, uh, participate virtually. No. Um, uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, Senator Wynne, and the honorable members of this committee and all the resource persons present. If it pleases this committee, may I respectfully respond to some of the important uh, points raised by the good senator, sir? Yes, go ahead, po, Dr. Andaya. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, first, I laud the direction of this committee to fund the NC for our TVL students. Uh, Mr. Chair, we explored that possibility sometime in 2018 at the earliest and 2019, but there were some uh, concerns uh, we needed to thresh out at that time, such as number one, um, 
some of those who took TVL in senior high school proceeded to university because we had an informal survey at that time, and then some of them just wanted to take TVL, but really in 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 uh, choosing the exit, they still chose uh, higher ed. And then number two, um, students enrolled in TVL have three specializations, not just one, because as uh, the committee very well knows, there are uh, specializations that end in one semester, two semesters, depending on the nominal duration, and of course, depending on the specialization. And so uh, it will now be up to the student which specialization or which mini course uh, in the language of TESDA, the, the student will have to pick so that uh, he'll be able to take and pass the NC. And uh, number three, uh, TESDA, when we had an informal discussion with them in 2018 and 2019, were saying if all TVL uh, students uh, will take the NC, it will be difficult for them to uh, manage that. Knowing that there are, uh, I think, uh, and I think you mentioned that as well, uh, Mr. Chair, that there are not a lot of uh, certifiers uh, that will be able to conduct that in a period uh, that's needed, that it is needed. That's for TVL po. And then for higher ed as one of the exits, uh, it was mentioned that there was a bridging program that uh, that that even until now are being offered by some universities and colleges, and some of our students uh, are being rejected from the degree program. We found that out as early as 2018, uh, Mr. Chair, because uh, some of our students came to the regional offices saying that uh, even the act of uh, uh, applying for an entrance test in university, even in that uh, phase or step, they, they were already rejected. Why? Because the track or strand they took up in senior high does not match with the choice that they, they want to, pro, to pursue in uh, college. And so right from the start, no more entrance exam for them. And that's why we, uh, I believe we talked to Chad and uh, there was a um, CMO that was uh, uh, released that the students, our senior high school students be allowed to at least take the entrance exam. There were those who took, uh, there were those universities who, uh, what's this, which, which accepted our students, at least in terms of the entrance exam. And then when they found out that they passed, then they just gave the bridging program. Uh, during the discussion, but I am not privy to this, this was just uh, relayed to me uh, in the few years of uh, implementing the senior high school, that um, CHED and DEP ed officials at that time were saying that uh, the, the, the senior high school program was aligned with that CR, uh, the college readiness standards. And what make our students college ready are not the specializations, it's the core subjects. And so there was somehow a back and forth. And then uh, I think that uh, what the other universities are doing now is uh, simply that they offer bridge programs. But there are those really that are turned away even at the first step of taking the entrance exam. And uh, lastly, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we've made some consultations because we are reviewing the senior high school curriculum. We've uh, undergone several consultations with uh, TEIs, uh, with higher ed institutions, and uh, some other sectors. And um, in our FGDs, many of them are also saying that our students are college ready. And in the absence of uh, a particular test that really measures if our students are college ready, we take uh, cognizance also of, of this feedback coming from the university. And we will take all this into account, uh, Mr. Chair, once we proceed with the review of the senior high school program because uh, these, um, these concerns 
challenges have already been raised many times in our conversations with different stakeholders. Uh, that's it for me, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Andaya. I'll uh, discuss some of your points earlier no? uh, that you mentioned. Uh, first of all, let's go to the basics. I think uh, the first senior high school graduate the first batch is 2018, correct? Correct. Okay. So it's been five years already. No? And I, I commend the Tracer study that was conducted no, right after the first uh, graduates. Uh, however, uh, the most important here is assessing their college readiness because 80%, more than 80% go to college. Eh? And uh, from your Tracer study, it seems to me that they're not ready because they, their feedback is difficult difficult uh, difficulty in subjects no or in the subjects in college so my initial reaction there is they're not college ready although uh, you said earlier that you have also information that some of them find it easy so to take out the arbitrary arbitrariness yeah. of uh, opinions uh, it's better to conduct a formal college readiness assessment no uh, that will guide us whether our college students, you know, 80 per, uh, our senior high school students, 80% of them are indeed college ready or not. Now, that's the most important. Eh? Uh, and then uh, that, that's number one. I, I, I'm urging the department to, uh, to, uh, to uh, already conduct some form of college readiness assessment. And we can work on the budget together. You know? uh, I'm, I'm sure we need to fund that also. Number two is the, uh, Senator Pia mentioned this earlier, and, and I remember also clearly when we were debating the senior size, the K-12 uh, law, that, um, that the senior high school will be some form of, um, it, will be a, a, it will be a preparatory stage for our college and in fact, there were talks to bring down some of the general education subjects to senior high school. So in other words, it, it should be seamless no, between our uh, senior high school to uh, college. Take into account also two important things. No? Number one, we all know that our senior high school students are still very young, no? meaning they can still change what they want to do in life, no, and that happened. I think that's a majority. That 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 the event happens to majority of us, no, including ourselves. Number two is we have supply issues, no. Even though they want to take STEM, and I'll I'll, I'll show you a very important study by PIDS, no? slide fifty. And I think I thank Dr. Urbeta for generating this. And you can, Dr. Urbeta, you can also share with us. No, on in slide 50, we found out that in our public schools, which is 90% of our students, only 9% has the ABM strand. Let's let's bring it out. Can you bring it out? Yan, palakihan natin. Yan. Uh, look at our public school. No? Uh, 9% has the ABM strand. 10% have the Hume strand. No? And 7.8% has the uh, STEM strand. So I'm a high, senior high school student. I want to be an engineer. But only 7% of our schools have the STEM strand. Hindi ko naman kasalanan na 7% lang. No? And then when I go to college, for, so 7%, so meaning the 93% has no STEM strand. I'm forced to take gas or I'm forced to take ABM. And then when I go to college, I want to take engineering, I'm forced to take the bridging program, which is not free, I understand, and takes time also. No? So... We have to take this into account as well. No? In a perfect world, sana all of this available. But it's not going to be like that for a very long time. But we're already penalizing our students when they reach college. No? 
Uh, Dr. Beto, you want to share? This is your, uh, a study that came from you. You can also give us your thoughts on this. Yeah, yeah, that, that's uh, that's that's one of the things that we found out. So in the uh, that's national average. So actually, there's a table that that computes it at the municipal level. Uh, we tried to compute, uh, like for example, so just summarize the table. Uh, that uh, sixty four percent of the municipalities have no ABM. Where just counting have no. Uh, that uh, yeah, this, it's in the study actually. Uh -uh. actually. Yeah, in uh, in uh, then seventy percent have no humes, seventy four percent have no stem, and thirty seven percent have no gas. And maritime ninety nine, almost one hundred percent doesn't have maritime uh, acad academic. For TVL thirty seven percent does have, have TVL. Uh, of course, ninety nine, almost one hundred have no sports and arts, and ninety eight percent. And uh, so basically, that's the extent of. Uh, Deprivation at the municipality level. We computed it uh, at the municipality, le municipality and city levels. So, like for example, because there is a probability that you can travel to the school if you want this, uh, but that's that's the situation. So that that means that if you want, if you are in a municipality who wants to have EBM and there's no none, and 64% don't have EBM, then you'll be forced to to take up. And the most popular, of course, is gas. Uh, and that's that's so the general. I think the other dimension of the of the deprivation is that the uh, it, you to talk about college readiness. Uh, one of the things that we realized is that the students are actually uh, not very much encouraged to. Uh, I think the other dimension about core courses that's supposedly the courses that prepare them for college because those are courses that are. Uh, downloaded from first year college to high school. The problem there is that of the, is the quality of teaching. So the students we ask, uh, we talk to, is that they said that most of these core courses uh, are are taught by junior high schools teachers. So they said that they just repeat what they have done in the grade seven to grade ten. It's not not interesting for them, and so. Uh, what was interesting is the strand, but as Director Ndaya said, the strand doesn't prepare you for college. What prepares you for college is the core courses. So we're very much worried about that. That one, the, the most of the teachers are junior high school teachers who are not prepared to teach that at the college level. That's supposed to be taught at the college level uh, because those are those will not be repeated when they go to college. But what we found out is is, is that 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 the students said. Uh, repeat lang po yung uh, yung ginawa namin from grade 7 to grade 10. So hindi na sila interesado. Yung there's nothing new in there. Uh, now when you go to college, ganun na nangyari as if yung uh, grade 10 pa rin yung ano nila when they are supposed to be trained already at the college level first year because those, those subjects are not anymore as we have heard from the previous hearing are not anymore taught in 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 uh, in college. So in ang nangyari noon because of of course uh is no be bridging yung ano noon besides that. So if they have a very good if you teach very good core courses then perhaps the college readiness will improve and you have to deal with the idea that I think there was a problem at that DepEd requires certain units it's like uh, BS math cannot teach for instance uh, be without uh, let for instance. So there are, there were problems like that that prevents specialists from teaching college level math, for instance, in senior high school uh, because of those requirements. So that, uh, that's, I think, the uh, there's administrative requirements to be able to teach in senior high school. I think it was relaxed, uh, but I don't uh, I don't know what's the extent of of implementation. But so those are the things that 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 I I think very crucial to the to the to improve college readiness, we have to improve the teaching of the core courses. And we have to impress upon, uh, I think the other thing that we observed is that the, because it was new, the strands were very attractive to the students because they, it, it, it caters to their preferences. They forget about the core courses, which we them for college, and 80% of them goes to college. So they were attracted to accounting and all of that. And so 
uh, uh, all the strands or, or the TVL are, even you will be surprised that one of the things that we surprised us is that they wanted to take TVL because the computer training in TVL was much better than in STEM. Uh, and when they go to college, because they want to go to, uh, they want computer science in college, and they found that the TBL teaching in computer science is better in TBL than in STEM. So when they go to college, this guy who is planning to, to go to computer science cannot do it because of the restrictions that he has no enough training for, for computer science because he, he took TBL. That's what, that's what uh, the, uh, the higher education uh, so in, in in senior high school. So there's a lot of confusion. That's why this bill is very much important uh, to ironing out because there are a lot of confusion on, on in, in what senior high school brings to the students, uh, both uh, going to college as well as going going to employment. So that that does so I think the bill is, is by 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 creating a council that will talk and talk and talk and about these issues, they will be able to stress out the problems of of these problems, which are which needs really because these are very dynamic and sometimes can be localized and what's what's really in the the in what's really needed in the local, locality can be discussed at the local level and at the national level. So, so those kinds of that that's I think what's very promising on the, on, on 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 what the bill. The other thing that I like to also mention that in the uh, the idea of of having national certification is, is almost purely concentrated on TVL. Why is that? We have EBM, which can take bookkeeping courses, uh, bookkeeping in Cs, for instance. There are a lot of those, uh, the, 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 the range of courses is not only for technical courses. Also, we remember that we have two-year colleges before, right? That have certification that can also be done. Okay, so that should not our employment opportunities. If we want our to to, to pursue employment, it should also cover the ACAD uh, group because there are there are certifications for those kinds of training. And finally, we almost forget that our government uh, can also hire senior high school. Except, of course, that uh, and the bill has 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 pointed out very much correctly that has to change the qualification requirements. So one of the things that the DEPED can encourage to, is to take the sub-professional sub exams for government, for, for senior high school. Uh, that, that, that's, that should be, that can also solve another, uh, if, if someone, uh, some young students wants to join government at the level six, six or down, they only need a sub-professional eligibility. To, so senior high school should be also encouraged to take that as well. So three areas, TVL, you have ACAD, should all, all, you should aim at, at, at encouraging students to take certification because that will encourage them to, uh, or that will uh, increase their probability of getting employment if, if that's dealt with uh, correctly. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arbeta. Dr. Arbeta, this is the slide that you're pointing out, no? Uh, like for example, ABM. Uh, accounting, business, and management. Uh, Thirty-six percent of our uh, municipal LGUs yeah. uh, have no ABM. No, so yeah, I, yeah. they're forced to take, let's say, gas no. or whatever. No, and then they plan no. to go to college that, taking. That, that's sixty-four percent. Po, In, uh, this is not the last no, not offering. Not offering. Uh, sixty-four percent are not offering. Uh, 60, not, 64 percent are not offering uh, 64 percent are, are not, not offering. offering yeah so you're forced to take another stand yeah, yeah. if you, you like cbm you know you're in a municipality you first uh, most probably to be gas but when you go to college you want to take let's say marketing yeah that, that, that they will be, maybe the college uh, the ECI will tell you you're not prepared for that because you're just you're rejected is that uh, uh this there's a memo that says that i don't know how it's implemented it's always a school by school level but based on the information of uh dr andaya you're uh outright rejected or you're forced to take a bridging program i no? one I didn't just ask a question why is a student who passes an entrance exam still required to have a bridging program that's, that's a question. Uh, that's that's why I said earlier the bridging program is uneven. Eh? 
I know there are some colleges na walang bridging program. I know there are some college bridging program. How much is a bridging program, Dr. Francisco? Do you have an, any idea? More or less lang? Uh, it costs the same as a, a subject, a three-unit course po. So how much will a, a student pay for a bridging program? Depende po yan, sir, sa school. The more because... or less, more or less lang. <laughs> Pag private a three unit course my my course more or less so we have a working figure mga three thousand pesos so they they're and how long does a bridging program one semester po one semester so three months four months uh that will be five five months so they're forced to take Six plus four. five yeah. natin four months no. So they're forced to take additional four months and pay five thousand pesos for three, that. Yeah, three to five. Yeah. Oh, how many? But one subject lang yan, di ba? How one many subject. Sub lang but how many subject? Well, more or less? depende po, kasi usually what the HEIs do is they give them some kind of diagnostic test, or based on the the transcript or their grades. The HEI will recommend you need bridging in this subject, you need bridging in this subject. So, depends sa estudiante. Yeah, but is there a policy that your your track uh -uh. should be the same as what you were, what your Love what you want to take in there's, college? There's no policy, sir. Uh, it also depends on the on the course they're taking. Now, for example. All the sciences, the pure sciences, math mathematics, biology, chemistry, physics, no, they don't assume any of the STEM subjects from high school, except the math. No, yung math lang. So whether nag chemistry ka nung high school or hindi, you apply for BS Chem, they don't consider that. Nag ABM ka, okay lang yon. As long as you take a remedial in the, the math, no, the pre-calculus. Yun lang yung ina-assume. But engineering is different because they tried to reduce from five years to four years. So now they're saying, ah, itong mga binaba sa high school, we don't offer them anymore, no? We don't, we assume that you have taken them because we've removed that from our curriculum and you need to learn those. So, mahigpit sila, no? If you're not STEM in senior high, you cannot qualify because we're assuming these things already. We're not willing to teach them again in college. So, depende po sa course na pupuntahan ng bata. Ang ABM, I don't think there's a problem. Because ABM, they don't assume that you've taken accounting or marketing. Galing ka sa gas, they will accept you in ABM. From what I understand, uh, uh, that there are your general subjects no your yes. core subjects core subjects and that core subjects is are the ones that will enable you to be college ready that's what yes. i understand yes. and those are the the ones that were brought down tama yes no? so regardless of what course you want to take in college if the core subjects are taught properly mm -hmm. you can survive you can enter whatever course in college yes. without taking any bridging program you have to remember sir uh, before k to 12 the old ge general ed there are two ge's there's a ge for stem and there's a ge for non-stem because for example the math and the not sci iba yung level na kinukuha ng science people and engineering people now with k to 12 those that went down are the general ge courses so yung mga STEM, hindi siya kasama dun sa ano, no? So that's why if you look at the senior high school, the STEM strand, iba yung kanila, may additional sila na math, may additional sila na sciences. Those came from the old GE for, for STEM. Ngayon kasi yung GE, wala nang separation. Whether your STEM, your business, your humanities is the same GE. That's good for our students, mm -mm. Ho? And and I said, like we said, no, um, there's a supply issue. Eh? No? So in in this in this slide, no, if you can if you can see, uh, for example, in STEM, almost sixty percent don't have STEM. Eh? So if I'm a senior high school student, I want to be an engineer, but there's no STEM in my school. 
I'm forced to take something else. But when I go to college, I'm forced to take a bridging program yes, again. No? Mm -hmm. So my point of the matter there is, um, kasalanan ng gobyerno, we couldn't overstem all over our schools. Eh. It's not the fault of our students. And the same with other subjects. So my point there is we have to take into consideration the supply issues. Or else uh, we're penalizing the learner for something that it's beyond their control. Yes, sir. Pero you also have to remember, sir, na it's not all that case. No? So merong konte na they wanted STEM, they wanted to go to engineering, but it's not available. But there are also students who are ano, ha, changing their minds. And on, it's normal for them to expect if I change my course, let's say I began accounting and then I decide I want to go engineering, they expect to extend. No, I won't finish in time because... I changed my course. So it's ganun, in college na. That's in college already. Si po yung senior high school, remember, inisip natin na these are actually the first year in college na bumaba. Yeah. And it's like, pag nagbalit ka ng strand, it's similar to shifting. Alam niyo yung, from first year, nag-shift ako. So there might be delays. No, there But might there's be also a comment of non-crediting. If that is the case, how come the comment, let's go back to that slide. We cannot credit high school subjects for college subjects. Mm -mm. That's, di ba? Kasi senior high school subjects are high school subjects. And I... I would assume this is the general education subjects. When the K-12 was uh, implemented, the GE also changed. Yung mga nababa po sa senior high school, wala na po siya sa GE. There's no repetition now, so you cannot credit anymore. When, when the subjects from GE, the old GE went down to senior high, they disappeared in the new GE. Wala na po siya ngayon sa GE. So... so that means that the college courses, let's two two things. So the college courses have reduced the yes, time. Sir. The GE from 63 units before is now 36 units. Okay. Kasi bumaba na po siya sa senior high. Uh -huh. And uh, wala nang uh, GE subjects that are repeated in... Wala uh, na po, sir. We remove all the repetitions. Okay. Meron kaming... Uh, I, I, Actually, I want to show a slide. No? We, we mapped out, uh, uh, this is a crude mapping that we did. Nevertheless, uh, I, I want to show this to the body. Like, for example, um, general mathematics. No? Um, in senior high school, meron tayo niyan, di ba? General yes, mathematics. Look, it, it, it just naka flash, no? But in college, meron mathematics in the modern world. Opo. No? But if you look at the concepts, more or less, they're the same. Hindi you know? po, sir. Ang general mathematics is used to be math one in college. So it covers basically algebra, uh, may konting logic, statistics, probability. Ang mathematics in the modern world is more interdisciplinary. It covers the nature of math. Uh, it covers problem solving. It covers applications, for example, in voting, in finance, in... So, iba po siya. But if you look at yung uh, uh, expectations sa uh, senior high school, apply concepts of inverse, exponential, and yes. uh, logarithmic. So, may application rin eh. Yes, algebra po yan. Okay. Pero yung math in the modern world, wala na po siyang algebra. Okay. How about itong uh, oral communication? No? Um, like for example, we mapped out here uh, in oral communication, and then there's in college there per purposive okay. communication. But when we looked at some of the uh, expectation, may mga overlaps rin. I think, sir, yung purposive communication is more uh, general. It's more for the purpose of because they're now going to be trained professionally. So the purposive com is now linked to their profession. No? So they will be trained to communicate in any medium, no? kung ano man yung profession nila. So whether it's by using uh, social media, by using uh, writing, 
by using videos, by using speech. You no, know? so it's 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 the next level. You, know, you you concentrate on your audience and your mode of communicating. Well, what well, I think uh, my my point, um, Doctor. Uh... Francisco is the mechanism in which DepEd and CHED communicates, no, so that there will be no redundancy, there will be seamless transition from senior high school to college. We have to remember 80% of our senior high school enters college, no, and we want to make it as seamless as possible. The bridging is not seamless, no. Yes, For me, no. it's it's not a sign of uh, being seamless. No? The yes. bridging is actually a hurdle for them no uh, if you're talking about five months of bridging you actually extended their senior high school from two years to two and a half years no parang ganun nangyari for them eh. no? uh -huh. so uh, um, that's why my point is what is the mechanism for dep ed and ched to sit down and to make sure that our senior high school enters college seamlessly Walang problema. They they move and uh, go into uh, college without encountering all of these yes. complications. Actually, sir, if you look at paper on paper, the the competencies seamless dapat yan. No, ang nangyayari lang. It's very uneven. Uh, even before before K to twelve, no, when they come to college, some students come prepared. Their high schools have prepared them very well. So they can go seamlessly. But there are some students yung hindi na prepare nung high school nila. Walang problema noon because there's an overlap. They take algebra again, nakinuha nila nung high school. Yung English nila, inuulit nila ulit. So parang yung lack nung high school, napupuno, in the first year, what happens is they're being equalized. No? So maganda yon. Pero ngayon, tinanggal natin yung repeats. No, so wala nang yung algebra na na miss nila nung high school. There's no opportunity for them now to to refill it. Kasi tinanggal yung ano eh common subjects eh. So it's still the same problem from before, but we feel it now kasi wala yung common subjects and the only way to refill that gap is to offer bridging. What is the mechanism? No, I am not uh... Uh, is there is there a a a, a, a mechanism where DepEd and Ched talks about this uh, senior high school issues? No, because um, right now it seems in my my take with all this feedback, it seems to me that it's not as it's not seamless for our students. Eh? No, it's seamless for you, but for them it's not. No, that's why I'm trying to address. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, if may I may be allowed. Yeah, and then and then after Dr. Uh, Miss uh, Victorino, Dr. Andaya. Ah, yeah. Uh, perhaps Director Andaya first, po. Baka you, uh, yeah, Director Andaya, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I I just would like to to also say that uh, the mechanism at this time is not that. Um, well, uh, may I just say that uh, we've not been talking that much with Ched. Uh, and that is something that uh, perhaps this committee and your bill, uh, Mr. Senator, might be able to, to rectify because there really needs to be, not just perhaps uh, with Ched, but also with TESDA because there are um, uh, mini courses that are uh, being implemented uh, right now, or a revision to the uh, specializations, and I refer to TESDA, that need to be also made by DepEd. And uh, we need to cope with all those changes as well uh, in the coming school year. And that's why that mechanism should be smooth. For, for CHED, there are many issues that we need also to thresh out. And I believe that uh, under uh, Vice President and Secretary Sara Duterte, that's one of the things that she would want uh, to do, uh, creating a mechanism whereby all the three uh, institutions will be able to sit down together and talk about this. Uh, we have, in the review of the curriculum, and it's uh, perhaps eventual release sometime this May, 
uh, we have always invited Ched to our um, meetings, discussions, and workshops just so that they can shed light on some of the policies and um, uh, pertin pertinent pertinent uh, documents that we need to look into as we uh, review the curriculum. But their help, specifically in senior high school, uh, will be very much uh, needed. Uh, Mr. Chair, I also would like to, to mention that uh, DepEd, prior to this administration, also held uh, several talks with civil service as regards the possibility of uh, allowing our uh, senior high school graduates to qualify for entry-level positions or employment under the civil service rules. It's an ongoing discussion also. Thank you. Thank you, Director. And I will uh, invite, uh, C I think, CSC is here no? uh, later on to comment on that. Um, but thank you. Thank you for uh, your honesty and candor that uh, both Ched, DepEd, and TESDA uh, needs to uh, constantly communicate on the matter of senior high school. No? Um, uh, let, let, let's go back to the findings. No, because in the findings, there's also another finding here: misalignment of senior high school track with TESDA courses. And it also came out last time that not all courses being offered by DepEd are accredited by TESDA. No, correct. So. Um, I was actually surprised because I would assume that all courses go through TESDA, TESDA being the uh, premier uh, uh, cert accreditation body of the country. And it goes without saying that uh, all of these TVL courses should uh, follow the training regulation of uh, TESDA so that you can be accredited. But I was actually surprised that uh, there are some courses DepEd offered that is not part of uh, the TESDA training regulation. Um, Mr. I would Chair? assume that is the misalignment. No? Um, um, and, and again, that, that student might be penalized or will be penalized because, for example, I, want, I took up a course. Then at the end, there's no accreditation. Or there's no certification. Then I'm left hanging because my course that I took for two years cannot be certified because no certifying agency will do that. And then I think there's, there's, it's dead end for me. No? I'm, I'm trying to remove the dead ends. Eh? Um, that's what we're trying to do. No? Uh, Dr. Andaya, go ahead. Yeah, uh, may I comment on that, uh, Mr. Chair? Uh, it is true that there are a handful, and I think four or five only, out of the total of 110 uh, or more specializations. And these are about uh, weaving. Because at the moment, TESTA does not offer us, uh, this does not offer those particular specializations, but that these are needed in the communities. And so, uh, Mr. Chair, these are outlier specializations, not accredited by TESTA, but there are industries that are very much interested about uh, hiring our students who underwent this particular non-NC certifi uh, certification. And that's, I think, the beauty also of uh, what we're doing. Although these are not TESDA certified, but these are uh, this also came from those industries that need our uh, the manpower of our senior high school graduates. And that's why we offer them basketry, uh, weaving, um, there are only four or five, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. I uh, recognize the proactiveness of DepEd. No? Uh, I'm sure that that's a response uh, to the local necessities. No? Uh, however, I'm trying to also find a proper exit and create value for our uh, students. For example, uh, if weaving is in is a, a in demand skill in that locality, I think it will, will create more value if the student will have a certification that he is a NC1 NC2 mm -hmm. certified weaver, no, and then that because that certification is transferable, you can go anywhere, not only in the Philippines uh, but the whole world. My point there is. Um, 
uh, I know that uh, DepEd's being proactive, but I'm also trying to uh, put together uh, TESDA and DepEd so that we create value for the students. It's really, I'm looking at the students. Eh? And uh, that's why um, uh, part of the uh, uh, recommendation that I will have is for, for, for TESDA and um, DepEd to work more closely together no? so that all the courses uh, can be certified and then TESDA will also be uh, in tune or in line with the requirements of our communities. No? Like, for example, weaving. I, I, know, I know, for example, in Mindanao, no? some communities, they value weaving. Then TESTA should also look at that and create a course, uh, a training regulation for that so that DepEd can use it. No? Yeah. Mr. Go Chair, ahead. No. if I may, Mr. Chair. Actually, Mr. Chair, we do have training regulations in handloom weaving in traditional crafts. And uh, this is part of our currently 315 training regulations that have already been promulgated by the TESDA board. And on top of this, we also have, Mr. Chair, the area-based demand-driven TVET, wherein we recognize the needs of the locality. Uh, by the regions and by the provinces, and we directly coordinate with our local counterparts and the industries in the development of competency standards that our partners, not only with the DepEd, but in the uh, higher education, but also in other, other stakeholders may utilize. And just for the information of, uh, info of everybody, Mr. Chair, we have a standing memorandum of understanding with the DepEd, uh, this was signed in 2019 by then DepEd Secretary Briones and TESDA Secretary La Pena. And part of this uh, is, the develop, is the establishment of a working group that will uh, work in, uh, through regular consultations, that will work on harmonization and complementarity of strategies, policies, and programs on TVET and skills training. Uh, consistency and quality assurance of training regulations and standards on TVET, discussion and resolution of concerns as may be raised by both uh, by either of TEP, TESDA or DepEd, and agreement on common research and innovation programs, Mr. Chair. And then we also uh, included in that particular MOU the sharing and consolidation of trends and data on uh, TVET. And the validity of this MOU, Mr. Chair, is five years since uh, 2019 when it was signed by both parties represented by our secretaries. And uh, we wish to emphasize also, Mr. Chair, that in uh, TESDA, we always uh, look at quality assured technical vocational education and training. That's why we have the uh, training regulations, the competency standards, and then we also have program registration and accreditation of assessment centers. We understand that the TVL uh, is part of the basic education. And if we are unable to register their, that particular program to be offered as part of the senior high school, we, as, as um, uh, expressed by our Deputy Director General in the last the public hearing, that trust and confidence with the, our partners from the Department of Education that they are using our training regulations as reference and as standards in the development of their curriculum uh, for, for their program offerings. We also have, Mr. Chair, the assessment and certification and um, this is where we bring the trainees or the students and the graduates for national certification, Mr. Chair. And we have in our Tibet ecosystem from region one to the BARM, uh, a lot of uh, assessment centers, but we know that if, if we will have the full uh, mandatory assessment of our senior high school, then we have to work more on the expansion of our, of our assessment centers and to expand also our capacity to be able to absorb our uh, senior high schools, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Director Castillo. Uh, Dr. Uh, Director Andaya. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I stand corrected po as regards uh, hand weaving. It's really a handicrafts, uh, Mr. Chair, basketry, fashion accessories, needlecraft, woodcraft, leathercraft, all needed by the industry and uh, what's in the locality we responded to this. But not taking, uh, of course, not, uh, but also ensuring that even as these do not have the necessary NCs, Okay, because it's equivalent to 160 hours. We ensured that they have NCs also in other areas. And therefore, Mr. Chair, uh, we made sure that our students taking up the tech voc track will also possess, if uh, they would want to take up an NC, that they can, because there are two other specializations that they, they, they uh, take up. Uh, that, that's my clarification po. And I agree with uh, our test counterpart that there was this memo, the memorandum of, memorandum of understanding that was made sometime in 2019, but that that group of which I am a part only met for like uh, once or twice. And so my, my, my point is that we need to meet regularly, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Maybe we can embed in the bill, uh, Dr. Rebeta, a mechanism to review no, the senior high school curriculum by the three main agencies. No, and dami ng body na magkakasama kayo. May PQF, merong curriculum ano? Curriculum consultancy uh, group, di ba? May TEC, may ano pa? Philippine Credit. Ni pa ba enough yung nag-uusap kayo? Di ba? There are, I think four or five different bodies that three of you are part of. Eh. No? So, but in, in, in any case, maybe part of, for purposes of senior high school review, I think uh, because there's intersection between the three, eh, clearly, you know, I think uh, we can make it more cohesive uh, um, uh, that the uh, meeting will be, uh, the review, for the purposes of review, uh, the review should be uh, more frequent and also there's a, uh, there's some sort of output so that uh, us you know, policymakers will be guided and educated. No? So we'll probably include that in the bill. Uh, I understand, Dr. Better, you need to leave. Uh, uh, do, you, do you have any comments uh, uh, regarding our discussion? I, I think the, the one that is pertains to the discussions already, we, I think we, I already have mentioned my, our agree, uh, agreement, I think, the other things that I would like to mention are really just like the the comments on the using the tax incentives, uh, because uh, I I thought that you should be aware that that has been done in other, but it doesn't work uh, actually. I think uh, uh, Doctor Phoenix has mentioned that, uh, uh, so maybe you should find other ways of, of encouraging. Uh, encouraging private sector uh, participation in this, and 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 that has been always a problem. And we're trying to look at it closely, and then hopefully finding a way of better better ways of encouraging the private sector. I think uh, the other thing, the thing that I would like to mention as well is the the creating the database uh, uh, that's also in the bill. Uh, I'd like to mention that uh, we have a uh, field job net database in the Dole. And that's a long running uh, platform, uh, government platform of databases. And, and that would be, uh, the experience of that will be very much useful in, in building on whether this should be part of the field job net uh, or, or, or separately, that, but the experience itself, I, uh, Dole should be able to explain that uh, as well. So I think those are the uh, other things that I have not mentioned already from my first uh, online appearance here in the hearing and, and today. And, and we just, uh, I'm very much, very much hopeful that the, and, and like very much the stand of the bill that to address the issues uh, of, of the squarely, uh, because there are issues and, and we have to recognize that and we cannot uh, put it under the rug and, and have to, uh, the, the way that the chair has, has, has dealt with it point by point is, is very laudable. Uh, that's the only way we can solve our problems, acknowledge it and find solutions for it. I think that's the memo. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Arbeta. We'll talk about the tax uh, 
incentive uh, later on, and I stand corrected with my comments earlier. Uh, I review the uh, CREATE law uh, once again. Uh, I will discuss that when we uh, hear the comments of uh, the Department of Finance. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rebeta. And once again, I commend you for coming up with this uh, study. Um, this is a three-part study. No, uh, to update that already yeah. because of it's already uh, five. Uh, assignment ng DepEd is to read this. I I not payata na babasa ito, no? But uh, but it, it it actually complements the tracer study. No, it actually complements the tracer study. So but no, it's uh, but the DepEd is part of the study actually. They are ah, so the, the but they, they haven't the, read it. It's part. I, of I I don't know, but that that uh, of course the the team that has yeah. been with us being purposely invited Neda and. DepEd to be with us in that study because that's um, and uh, the, the planning team should 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 is know should know because they are part of the study. Thank you. Planning. Thank you. Uh, we'll call on uh, CSC. Uh, I think CSC has a lot of uh, uh, things to update the committee. Uh, and we raised their points last time that uh, there's no distinction between senior high school and a ten-year graduate. So might as well abolish senior high school if we're not going to make any distinction. The added two years should give them value. You know? But in the eyes of the government, obviously there's no value. You know? So, And I've heard um, uh, Commissioner Lisada mentioned that uh, they will look into this matter. So we want to get some updates from CSC. Uh, if there's one entity that should uh, give some priority to the senior high school students, it should be government because we're the ones who mandated senior high school uh, to our families uh, anyway. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Tuloy, uh, Attorney Timbol? Yes. Um, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity that the CSC may already clarify some points regarding its support to the K-12 program. Uh, may we inform um, this particular uh, committee that the, the Civil Service Commission has actually extended its full support to the K-12 program, uh, even uh, from the start when the law was actually passed. Initially, we started with um, approval of the qualification standards of um, the senior high school teachers, and then sometime in 2019, um, the Department of Education actually submitted a proposal to the CSC uh, specifically, it proposed the uh, amendment to the education requirement of at least two years of college edu education to high school graduate under the under Republic Act 10533. So, in other words, the DepEd is requesting that si senior high school graduates be considered as having completed two years in college. So, at that time, uh, the CSC was in a predicament. Why? Because there is also another law the Philippine Qualifications Framework, RA 10968. Uh, in that particular um, law, uh, there are actually eight levels of qualifications. And uh, we noted that um, if we compare at the executive order implementing the PQF uh, against the law issued in, uh, actually approved in 2017, there is a major difference uh, because uh, the basic education wherein senior high school and junior high school will be included actually considered as the foundation. Level 1 until 8, level 1 would start at NC1. It will uh, actually increase and C1, 2, 3, 4. And then uh, the, uh, the bat there is a diploma at level 5. Then there is a bachelor's degree at level six, seven would be at master's degree, and then the doctoral and postgraduate will be at level eight. So at that time, um, we were trying to um, actually um, understand uh, the effects of the PQF to the qualification standards set by the commission and vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, senior high school graduates qualification. Um, on May 5, 2021, the Civil Service Commission actually initiated a tripartite meeting between uh, and among DepEd, uh, CHED, and CSC representatives. Um, in that particular meeting, we discussed uh, several issues, 
Um, Mr. Chair, may I share some of this? If, yes, uh, go ahead. If go I ahead. may be allowed. Okay. Um, uh, one of the issues identified was applicability of the current PQF, the 2024 14 version, to the current uh, requirements. And then um, also on the part of DepEd, uh, it also commits to uh, interpret high school graduate as written in the CSE qualification uh, standards and how the educational level of junior high school uh, completers will be interpreted. Then um, equi equivalency of the national certification issued by TESDA was also discussed during that particular meeting. And notably, um, the first level administrative positions are heavily focused on the TVL track. So question about uh, how about the other tracks, such as academic, sports, and arts. Then um, on the part of the CSC, um, there is a request, to, uh, particularly on the consideration of the age requirement for the processing and taking of the civil service examination applicants from the senior high school graduates. Because um, as a policy, the CSC actually requires that uh, uh, applicants for examination must be at least 18 years of age. So uh, I think there are some uh, either junior senior high school graduates that who would like to uh, already take the exam. So this is also part of the study being undertaken by the CSC. And then um, on the part of the CHED, we actually requested clarification from the CHED uh, since uh, DepEd uh, is asking amendment or consideration that their senior high school graduates be considered as, uh, as having completed two years in college. We then requested clarification from CHED during the meeting. So um, as to if uh, we consider senior high school graduates as equivalent to having completed two years in college, how about those um, who have actually completed two years in the current curriculum? So how would we now compare uh, all of them? Because when we set qualification standards, we set them on a general um, uh, we artic general art articulation. So uh, we would like to really determine equivalency of uh, uh, the completion of senior high school, and then uh, the previous uh, curriculum as to the two years college and your current two years college right now. So what happened after that is a technical committee meeting was uh, again conducted that happened on August 16, 2021. The DepEd now spearheaded that particular meeting and they actually submitted a proposal. Uh, the proposal included uh, phases of implementation on how um, qualifications of senior high school may already be integrated in um, the employment in government. So, um, there are particular tasking as to what particular responsibility will be done by DepEd, by, done by the CSC, by the CHED, even TESDA. So uh, we were about to schedule another second uh, tripartite meeting, but it didn't happen until now. So it actually stopped at that, uh, it was in 2021, and we are still awaiting um, clarification from DepEd and even the even CHED for purposes of aligning our qualification standards with the requirement of graduates of senior high school. Uh, that's all I could share at the moment, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, attorney, with all due respect, no, parang meeting tayo ng meeting, but nothing's happening. No, okay. I think we have, got, we have met, what, how many times already? Four, five? Twice. Oh, twice, twice lang. But since, when's the first one? Uh, that was also in 2021. It's already 2023. Yes, Your Honor. So uh, the last time, it's actually being spearheaded by DepEd because uh, they're pushing for amendment of the qualification standards. I have, as I have mentioned, they have actually in, uh, committed um, to uh, include the basic education under the PQF level one and two. So they actually informed us that they have submitted a policy paper to the PQF National Coordinating Council. And they are actually facilitating approval of that. But until now, there is no uh, information as to the status of uh, the request of the DepEd for such inclusion or amendment in the PQF framework. Attorney, 
I think the basic here is we cannot have the same treatment for all. No? Yes. Uh, a graduate of the old 10-year curriculum should be treated differently. A graduate of senior high school under the K-12 law should be treated differently. A graduate of a two-year college should be dif treated differently. I think that those are very basic premises. We cannot lump them all together because, like I said, no, the se if you look at the curriculum of the senior high school, it's quite, it's quite hefty, it's quite robust. No? I mean, even CSC, you have analyst, analysts there, you have a lot of people, experts there. You look at the curriculum, and the curriculum will dictate what type of senior high school graduates we will have you know, uh, after completing that curriculum. Uh, if we add the accreditation, so much the better, the test accreditation. But even as we speak right now, uh, with the tracks and the strands and the two years additional, uh, it gives them not only maturity, but additional skills to, to be, for them to land a decent job, uh, more so landing a job in government. So my point of the matter here is, we should have different treatments for these three types of um, completers. Uh, and for now, we don't have that. Eh? Uh, we have to remember that the first senior high school batch was 2018. It's already 2023, no? 2023. And the, the CSC guidelines is still the same. No? Uh, the way you treat our senior high school students is exactly the same compared to the old 10-year curriculum, which is totally unfair. That's my point. It's not fair that we added two years and then we're not recognizing those two years. That's my point. And um, uh, I don't think you should, uh, it doesn't take a lot of, just read the curriculum of the senior high school. I think that's basic. I think the new curriculum and see what type of graduates we are producing. And uh, ito, ito, this, is, this, is the, this is what uh, is quite, um, uh, it, this, this provision, no, in double asterisk, it's, it's very unfair. No? This includes graduates of high school under the old and new curriculum, senior high school. So we're lumping them together. Should not, that should not be the case. No? That's what my, my point. Because I looked at the senior high school curriculum many, many times. It's very different from the old 10-year curriculum. Malayo siya. There's value. And we're not, as government, should recognize that. No? So, and I've, I've, I've uh, I, I go back to the interview of, of Commissioner Lizada. She recognizes that. All I want to hear is, when do you start recognizing our senior high school graduates? Um, You've been meeting for two years now. It's really a matter of action already. When do we, when do we, I'm not, we're not demanding, you know, complicated jobs for senior high school students. What I'm demanding is recognition that there are senior high school students and they can work in government, uh, certain government jobs. That's what I'm demanding. Go ahead, attorney, if you have any. Any Thank you, Mr. Comments? Chair. Um, definitely, uh, we could identify specific positions, but uh, Mr. Chair, uh, there are specific position titles in uh, the government, and um, when we actually publish these positions, um, possible contenders or applicants could either be, as you mentioned, either from uh, the old curriculum high school graduates, either from the senior. Uh, so we could not specifically isolate uh, what specific positions would uh, uh, be best uh, catered or uh, would best fit uh, senior high school graduates at the moment? Because, um, as mentioned, it could also uh, applicants could also come from high school graduates who also completed vocational course, and then um, so we know for a fact that uh, the spe uh, specific section uh, section eight of the proposed bill mentioned about affirmative action. And uh, we know for a fact uh, uh, what the, uh, the particular intention of that provision is. Um, the Civil Service Commission um, actually commits to review uh, further our existing qualification standards. In fact, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, the CSC um, is um, trying to 
uh, have a qualification standards information system wherein from your manual uh, uh, manual basis of uh, yung printed copy po ng ating manual, it will can be accessed to via website. Um, we'll, we already have inventoried uh, first level positions and based on our inventory, uh, around 1,476 are first level positions. Uh, out of this 1,476, uh, about 937 uh, may actually be applicable or appropriate uh, for our senior high school graduates. However, um, there could be some distinction as to some positions. As mentioned earlier, uh, some positions might require a sub-professional eligibility. Uh, positions such as uh, for the uh, clerk, clerical positions actually require sub-professional eligibility as compared also for some positions belonging to the trades and craft. So, iba-iba din po yung dimension. So far, what we have been discussing with the DepEd, with the CHED, is more of the dimension of the education. But uh, for uh, the positions, the first level positions in, in government, there are other, uh, other dimensions that uh, applicants or candidates have to actually meet for them to be considered uh, to the position. But um, on behalf of the commission, we would like to um, inform uh, the honorable uh, senator that uh, we are already uh, working on it uh, as to our commitment to uh, actually uh, make a distinction from the MC that we have issued in 2019. Yes, we have to admit that uh, at that time we were actually um, uh, quite uh, confused as to the PQF as to its application as to whether uh, senior high school graduates are really part of the secondary as to uh, no difference at all. But uh, based on the discussion with DepEd, with CHED, and of course, uh, all available uh, materials about uh, the senior high school, the K-12 program, uh, the CSC is uh, more, more than ready to identify said positions, Mr. Chair. Like for example, uh, if a senior high school student will take ABM, or will take STEM for two years. That means something to government. Right? I mean, if you have taken accounting, uh, business, and management, that means you've acquired skills in accounting, business, and management, as opposed to someone who has not taken ABM uh, under the 10-year course. So that two years ABM is value for us, no? government. And we should recognize that because right now, under the eyes of the CSE, there's no recognition to that. Eh? That's, what, that's what is quite disappointing for all of us. We're not recognizing the ABM, the HUMES, the STEM, even the TVL track that they have taken for two years. In the eyes of government, well, it, it's, it's valueless. It's, there's no value to that. No? So that's I'm trying to change that because that sends a signal to our constituents that government itself is, is putting a lot of, of weight to that two years that we added. Uh, and CSC is a very important govern, government agency. So it's a constitutional body, and it, it, it's an important body that also uh, sends signals to people who want to work in government. So. And in my opinion, you don't need to meet so many times. Just look at the curriculum. The curriculum is, speaks for itself. Eh? No? Just look at the look, ask the commissioners to look at the curriculum and assign a value to that curriculum. It's impossible that you cannot value that two years. Eh? Because if you look at the curriculum, that two years is quite extensive, you know? even in the absence of the test the accreditation. So not to belabor this issue, uh, my message to the CSC is independently look at the senior high school curriculum and independently assess what jobs we can offer to their senior high school uh, graduates and also to decouple the 10-year uh, high school graduates to our senior high school. Uh, if you are giving the 10-year high school graduates a specific job, the senior high school should be a step higher because they've learned uh, additional skills for the last two years. That's my point. No? 
and um, uh, because it, it's taking so much time. Eh? You know? So independently, CSC should look at this and uh, assess it for themselves. No? Now go ahead, attorney. Mr. Chair, uh, yes, uh, uh, we, we are up for the challenge uh, as to um, independently uh, evaluating the curriculum of the senior high school uh, program. But uh, may I ask also, uh, the, although you have mentioned that we independently, but uh, for purposes of making sure that uh, the policies uh, to be issued by the commission is also inclusive, um, such that um, uh, every, uh, we actually apply uh, what we call uh, uh, EOP uh, with regard to employ employment in government, as much as possible, uh, equal opportunity for all who would like to join the government uh, should also be afforded to everyone. Um, we will do the independent, uh, but uh, I hope uh, uh, the Honorable Senator would not uh, take it uh, against us if we have uh, some light or some request uh, for meetings for uh, further cl clarification, especially for CHED. Uh, because uh, we are, we would like to be very much clarified when we identify specific positions that we that will be applicable to senior high school graduates, and as compared uh, to those uh, who have completed two years in college before and even until now, just to avoid confusion as to the application. Uh, Mr. Chair, will. Uh, uh, we'll do the independent evaluation, uh, but uh, we simply make sure that uh, um, it is in light of existing laws and rules. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Chad and uh, DepEd uh, are here, so I'm sure they'll be more than happy to meet you. But uh, let's do this with a sense of urgency because it's been the, it's been the, we've been talking about this for many, many times. In fact, uh, the whole I know the commissioners know about this issue very well, and. Uh, it's not only the first time that we've been talking about this. I think many events and many uh, occasions we have talked about the lack of um, importance the government is giving to our senior high schools. That's the, that's the, that's the crux of the issue. We, we ask government, we're not giving uh, our senior high schools graduates importance uh, in terms of job opportunities. No? So that's, that's the message that I want to convey to our uh, commissioners. Um, next is Dole. Uh, we're also joined by Mr. Jerome Lucas. Any comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you for inviting the Department of Labor and Employment. We would like to also share, uh, Mr. Chair, um, one of the studies conducted by Dole through the Bureau of Local Employment in partnership with Job Start Philippines. Um, a study on the employability of senior high school graduates from um, July to September 2019. The study aims to determine, first, the willingness and readiness of employers to hire senior high school graduates. Second, the types and status of jobs available to them. Third, um, the employer's experience in hiring senior high school graduates. The study revealed that employers have little knowledge about the senior high school program. Um, second, um, they also deemed that um, senior high school graduates are not as mature and as competent as college graduates and um, do not have enough skills for work, hence are only fit for rank and file or blue collar positions. Nevertheless, um, the employers claim that um, the senior high school graduates are employable and they are open to accepting them in company only for limited positions. The study recommends um, the following. Number one, the improvement of senior high school curriculum to enhance the competency building through subjects that are focused per strand or the intended work incorporate um, vocational subjects to emphasize specialization. Second, include soft skills um, and character development for the workplace. Third, consider incentiv incentivizing companies that accept, absorb, train and retain college, uh, I sorry, um, senior high school graduates. Um, fourth, to highlight or promote companies who hire senior high school graduates. And finally, um, raise awareness and educate employers on the intended outcomes of um, the senior high school program. 
Um, the DOLE identified interventions to enhance the employability of senior high school students. Um, first, um, um, there is already an existing labor market information mechanisms to be um, expanded, especially for first-time job seekers. Second, to boost and um, expand the existing youth programs of the Department of Labor and Employment, such as the SPES, GIP, and Job Start that increase the employability and productivity of workers. Third, to uh, further strengthen the capacity of our public employment service offices, or PESOS, to deliver effective job matching and counseling services at the local level. And finally, to have a closer coordination between the employers, the academe, and the government to efficiently share and disseminate labor market information. We'd also like to share, Mr. Chair, that um, the Department of Labor and Employment is very supportive of the bill, um, particularly because um, one, one of the key priorities of the department is to um, increase the employability of workers, including the senior high school graduates, as indicated in the Philippine Development Plan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Tudole. Uh, we, we're also joined by the private sector, ECOP, represented by Mr. Uh, Marunilia. Any comments, sir? Uh, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> good afternoon. Yes, um, our um, Skills and Education Committee no, uh, noticed that <coughs> out of the four strands, the senior high school students usually go for the <coughs> academic strand. Um, this is because they, they believe that they, um, they are more employable with, um, with um, added education. Um, from the point of view of the of the employers, let's say we um, let's say I have two applicants. So one is a um, senior high school, the other is a college student. Um, given that everything is equal, I would uh, normally hire a uh, college graduate, um, unless of course if the senior high school um, would show me a certificate. Let's say the the job the job description is. Is cons concerns agriculture and the the senior high school has a certificate um, um, concerning agriculture. I would hire the senior high school. So that's that's that, that's a scenario that um, that I'm just trying to illustrate here in a simple uh, version. Um, yun lang pa, um, that that's also why not 80 percent of the senior high school enter college. It's also because um, from the point of view of the senior high school. Um, they would not um, um, mas konti ang chances na to get into college and at the, from the point of view of the of the employer of course uh, if we look at it in the equal in equal sense we would choose the the college student rather than the senior high school yun lang po except except mo kapag may certification siyang specialization and and all sorts of that yun lang po mr chairman thank uh, you i just want to ask the, you mentioned certification we we actually had a discussion about that earlier, is that a game changer for employers to hire? For example, if you do uh, fund the certification, uh, will that uh, improve the perception of our employers to hire senior high school students? Definitely a game changer, Mr. Chairman. Yes. And then, um, uh, based on the uh, experiences of our employers right now. What, what will be, aside from the certification, what other skills are they looking for? Um, what other um, uh, uh, what other skills are they looking for? What other traits are they also looking for um, yeah. that we should also uh, embed in our senior high school? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, as the, what the uh, our, our partner from Dole mentioned earlier, um, it is the soft skills that um, employers really look into because soft skills are these things that um, are not learned, no, just uh, are not easily learned. And in the long run, soft skills will, 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 uh, um, Soft skills, soft skills would be good, be better for a for a for a student rather than uh, the hard skills. You know, pa. Soft skills typically are learned on the job. Eh, you know, um, that's what I uh, that's what I I experience myself. You no, know? these are like for example teamwork. 
No? Um, these are soft skills. Eh? Um, cooperation. No? These are soft skills. But do you learn this by working or working with a team? No? Um, uh, you, you learn this by interacting with your teammates, whether inside the classroom, but more, most importantly, outside of the classrooms. No? So uh, that being the case, um, it, it, the immersion activity of, of senior high school is very important. And any, any, any uh, comment on the immersion program? Are, is ECOP aware that you know, our senior high school students uh, undergo work immersion? Are they aware uh, that uh, we have that in our senior high school curriculum? And if you are aware, uh, any feedback regarding the work immersion program? Mr. Chairman, we are aware of such program, but um, with the details um, on on such program, um, I'm not I'm not too familiar with it. So. Um, how about uh, the relevant skills? No, uh, for example, industry specific skills. Um, any, any feedback whether our senior high school students are learning industry specific skills? Like, for example. Uh, uh, let's say uh, in in the hospitality business, no tourism, hotel, restaurants, uh, tourism industry. Uh, any feedback regarding whether our s senior high school who are who are interested in that, no, uh, are being trained with relevant skills in hospitality or tourism or even agri, no, the agri sector. Um. Not, I'm not familiar with it, uh, Mr. Chairman. But what what we know from 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 our perspective is that these um, hard to fill in jobs uh, should be should be focused on in our tech book uh, subjects. So yun po ang ang uh, focus ng ECOP, such as uh, agriculture and automotive. These are the the industries that are uh, hard to fill jobs. So uh, hopefully, po, these are the Ang tech folk book would, would uh, focus on these uh, jobs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're also joined by ULAP. Uh, thank you to ECOP. And uh, any comments on the bill and on the discussion? Um, Mr. Chair, um, we fully support the um, the bill that has noble intention to ensure the senior high school graduate are fully equipped or work ready. And also we support the strengthening of multi-stakeholder co collaboration because we recognize the importance of which um, among national, local agencies and other concer concerned stakeholders, um, we, we support this kind of mechanism that will enable a whole of government appro approach to address the gap. Um, one notable, um, I, I can, I may uh, also observe other LGUs that um, have um, partnered with pri private sectors through their PESO program and offer job opportunities to the general public, specifically on high school or senior um, high school graduates fro from all curriculum. Um, nakikita ko rin po dito, Mr. Chair, if I may, that... Um, the continuous um, and strengthening the partnership with LGUs to and um, under the work immersion programs to develop the skills of our senior high schools. If I may also um, share that um, LGU Navotas in 2019 have um, has um, partnered with DepEd to train 203 senior high school students um, to work um, under the immersion program to work in, uh, in LGU Navotas. So, Mr. Chair, um, um, ULAP, together with our member leagues, um, um, if given the opportunity, would also like to be involved um, in the crafting of the um, bills IRR if um, if we are given that um, opportunity, Mr. Chair. That would be all. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to DOF, I, I think who's uh, Tony Espinosa. I think I made a, just put on record, I made a mistake in the interpretation of uh, 
uh, granting additional deductible incentives no? um, as specified in the law. Uh, that was discussed earlier uh, in the last meeting. So um, the intention is really to, um, the intention is to give uh, incentive as a, uh, give, it, give incentives as a form of deductible. No? So if you accept uh, senior high school students um, uh, in your company you know, as part of their work immersion program, um, that work immersion program can be used as a deductible. You know? So that is the intention of uh, our proposal. And uh, last time we uh, had an extensive discussion on that. Um, but uh, I want to clarify that the intention really is to uh, incentivize uh, by way of deductible. No? That is the that is the um, the concept that we are introducing. So, any comments to that concept? First of all, Mr. Chair, good afternoon, and thank you for giving the DOF the opportunity to provide some inputs to the hearing of this important bill. We, we do recognize the laudable intent and, and aim of this bill. Um, we, rece we, duly received Mr. And, uh, we duly received, Mr. Chair, the request for data in relation to Section 9 of the proposal. Um, and our Bureau of Internal Revenue is already in the process of extracting that data. Uh, but, but before I go into the, the status of the data collection, Mr. Chair, uh, we note, the DOF notes, uh, the clarification that the Honorable Senator made regarding the intent of this particular provision. Um, regarding the data requested of the DOF, uh, we would like to beg the indulgence of uh, the Honorable Senator, but our uh, Bureau of Internal Revenue has expressed uh, um, the need for additional time to complete the task of getting the data, particularly disaggregated data on the training, uh, training expense deduction claimed by corporations under the tax law as amended by CREATE, Mr. Chair. Um, of course, we have general comments as to the laudable intent of the bill and as to uh, the DOF's usual um, position regarding possibly or potentially revenue eroding measures, Mr. Chair. But we would like to reserve our final comments uh, when we obtain the, the data and can provide um, a more um, nuanced uh, analysis of potential impact. That's, I am very uh, careful also of any revenue eroding um, uh, concepts. That's why I want to start off with, with how many corporations are actually taking advantage of Section 4, letter, Section 4, number 5 of uh, CREATE, in which uh, additional deductible um, from taxable income of one half of the value of labor training expense. Um, how many corporations are actually taking advantage of this? Um, Unfortunately. Unfortunately, Mr. Chair, we are still in the process of getting that data. Uh, our BIR is, is on it. Okay, uh, yeah, because that, we'll start off with that. Um, because I want to know if um, corporations are being incentivized by this provision. The intention of this provision is to train. Uh, because if you train, you can use it as deductible. Mm -hmm. So our intention is make the work immersion explicitly part of the training. So if I take senior high school uh, students who are doing work immersion, I can use that as a deductible. Because right now, um, uh, from from my consultations with um, principals, it's very difficult to convince corporations to take in senior high school students. I, I don't know, Ms. Sabel, if you share the same you know, sentiment, but corporations in Valenzuela, they don't care if, because they don't, what's in it for them? You know? It's only people coming into their premises and they're not gaining anything. So as a matter of in making them, making it more attractive is if they take in, senior high school students, you can use that as a deductible to their expense. No? But I want to know first, how many, because we have a present law on that already, but how many 
companies are taking advantage of that. No? That's number one. And then number two, uh, what is the process? Because I understand from the last hearing from PCCI, from Dr. Phoenix, that it's quite difficult no, to, to, uh, to, um, to uh, fulfill the requirements for this deductible. No? So we want to also understand what are the requirements uh, because we might introduce that, but if the requirements are difficult, no, um, that's uh, going to be uh, useless. So we want to also know what are the requirements imposed. No? And then number three, uh, just give us your comment um, on that particular concept. No? Uh, work immersion program as part of training. No? Make it, we'll make it explicit. Noted, Mr. Chair. Uh -oh. And um, uh, yeah, just submit to us a position paper on that. I, yes, I know Mr. that uh, normally DOF takes time to analyze if it will erode revenue, but I'm very conscious of that, no? that uh, it should not uh, erode revenues. No? Uh, DBM, any comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, for the Department of Budget and Management, for our general comment on the uh, organizational and budgetary implications of the proposal or of the bill. Uh, first, we interpose no objection to the creation of the National Batang Magaling uh, Council to uh, integrate, harmonize, and align the efforts and resources of agencies concerned regarding this initiative. However, the provision of the requisite technical and support services to the Council should be handled by the existing organic staff of member agencies concerned with this collegial body. Hence, the creation of additional positions thereof is deemed not necessary. Uh, on the other hand, the creation of local councils in the different local government units or LGUs could also be pursued. The provision of secretariat support to, to the local council should be undertaken by the units uh, of the LGUs concerned. On the, uh, initial implementation of the of the proposal or of the bill uh, the same may be uh, charged against the dep ed program basic education curriculum with an allocation of five billion under the fiscal year 2023 general appropriations act in general we interpose no objection to to the proposal or to the legislative uh, proposed legislative measure uh, thank you mr chair thank you thank you to dbm and just just as a note to dof no um uh, there's a big debate this last hearing whether the current wording under uh, the CREATE law already includes work immersion. Um, so can you comment on that? Because uh, it can be interpreted that work immersion can already be part of the um, of um, section 34 number 5 of uh, the CREATE law. I don't know if you can answer that now, but um, um, but the intention is to make it explicit. But if you think that it's already part of, it can be interpreted as part of the create laws, uh, section 34 of create law, then uh, that that's that's fine. But um, can you can you comment on that now, or you want to submit to us your position paper? Perhaps to be uh, to be more certain, Mr. Chair, we can just put it or include it in the in the position paper. Um, because Dr. Phoenix already interpreted that it's already part of it. Hmm. It's already part of it, and um, that's why we want to understand from uh, the DOF whether it's it can be interpreted that way or we need to make it more explicit in the law. Oh, the, the the language employed in the pertinent section does use the does use the word enrolled in in public etc senior high schools and therefore it may uh, it may conceivably be interpreted to already include the work immersion program um, however uh, we we will discuss uh, uh, we will discuss this mr. chair and come up with a more definite position on whether further clarification or a more express um, language is necessary uh, to to um to convey the intent of of the provision thank you thank you thank attorney. you mr chair uh lastly dr phoenix is also online uh, 
Dr. Phoenix of PCCI, are you still there? Ah, okay, sige. All right. Um, he's uh, not available right now. Um, I've already exhausted all of my questions. If there are any more comments, um, Ms. Uh, Victorino, do you, do you have any comments on that incentive? Because if you look at the CREATE law, no, and let, can we flash this? Um, additional deductible can be granted. to students who are in skills development of enterprise-based training uh, under the public senior high school. Uh, do you know if, we, if corporations are uh, taking advantage yeah, of this uh, deductible? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, we have already submitted, or DepEd already submitted a position paper regarding this. Uh -uh. But do you have uh, any What's in your position paper? Uh, I, I don't have, I'm sorry po, I don't have a copy of our position paper, but we already submitted Okay, uh, the well, the, the intention here is it DepEd is covered. Yes. But the, I'm just wondering if, if, uh, uh, if corporations are indeed taking advantage of this and if our senior high school students are being benefited by that deduction. No? Uh, yun ang gusto ko lang, that's, that's what I want to know. Because if not, then we can, we can uh, uh, amend uh, this provision to include specifically work immersion program. So that's easy for DepEd to attract corporations to join the work immersion program. In fact, I asked that last time, how many companies have joined this work immersion program? Yes. Um, uh, I think that will be very uh, attractive, Mr. Chair. And it is, when, it, when uh, it comes to work immersion, partnership is done between the school or the division office and the local government units. Yeah, I understand that. But uh, for the division and the corporation, I think the mechanism there is for the principals and the superintendents to talk to corporations. No? Yes, Mr. Chair. To convince them. No? But, uh, but not all corporations are convinced. No? Uh, so what we want is to incentivize. No? If I mm -hmm. take your senior high school, I get some deductible. No? This mm -hmm. is the actual provision no, in CREATE. Uh, it can be interpreted that uh, our senior high school students are already covered, uh, particularly their work immersion program. But I want to know uh, in reality whether this provision there is uh, being uh, utilized by DepEd. Um, uh, where is that? Uh, I just, I don't want to give uh, uh, some reactions there, Mr. Chair, because there's already, I think, uh, a, a position on the part of DepEd regarding that. So, um, I, I still do not have yet uh, perhaps uh, uh, data regarding this. Okay, just submit to us. No, uh, the basic question is, this deductible being offered in CREATE, is it benefiting DepEd? In, particularly, in particular, our senior high school students. That's mm -hmm. the basic question there. Just submit to us yes. Uh, yes, data Mr. on Chair. that. Yes, Mr. Chair. PCCI, uh, Mr. Uh, Marlon, Mina. Uh, Dr. Phoenix, go ahead po. It's on. Uh, good, good afternoon, uh, Senator. Yes, we can hear you yes, both. Uh, no, as I pointed out in the last hearing, uh, this this uh, tax deduction is already available no, today. Uh, in the case of uh, PESA enterprises and BI registered companies, that uh, we can we can deduct all of our training expenses already. It's as 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 a as a uh, legitimate deduction from uh, our taxable income. But in addition to that, we are allowed to deduct fifty percent of that. Let's say if we it costs us hundred thousand pesos, then we will be able to deduct 150,000 pesos from our taxable income. No? Uh, 
but as for my own personal experience, uh, I do a lot of training in my companies, but then uh, I really have not availed of that uh, incentive because, as I said also previously, the the process is quite tedious, and secondly, uh, there's always some question on on how much, uh, what really are training expenses now. Uh, and that also goes for the Adopt School program, where the incentive is also available. Though, and uh, I have participated in the Adopt School uh, in uh, rebuilding uh, classrooms and uh, donating uh, educational uh, materials. Uh, but I have not also availed of that incentive. I just deducted what I whatever I, it cost me, you know, without asking for the additional 50%. Uh, so this is, as I said, this, this, this incentive is fine, but I think in the implementation and, and also in the manner that uh, we can, the, comp the private companies can avail of it, uh, it's not an incentive anymore, no? So that is really on that, on that particular subject. But, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, may, may I be allowed to also comment on the other things that was discussed today? Yes, go ahead, Paul. Uh, well, I, as I also said last time, only 20% of the cohort uh, are able to finish tertiary education or graduate uh, with a bachelor's degree or uh, an associate degree. Uh, from college or university. So you have 80% of the cohort that, that, that did not finish, no? Uh, and in fact, on the high school level, only 45% of the cohort graduate. And out of that 45% of that cohort that graduate from, in this case, the, the statistics, statistics are still uh, uh, in 2011 or 2012, before the implementation of the senior high school, uh, the 45% of the cohort that that are that finish grade 10 at that time, only 25% go to tertiary level. Uh, the other 20% also drop out. No, so but the point I want to make is that really uh, we should give. Dapat natin pagbigyan ng pansin yung mga disadvantage, the one that are not able to finish high school and those that are not able to finish tertiary education, no? which is the majority of the cohort. No? Uh, so we have to set up programs uh, that, that can really lead to the graduate being certified and also really getting the capabilities and the competencies needed for them to be able to be in, to be gainfully employed or gainfully self-employed no? uh, and that's why i i uh, in, in one of the recommendations of uh, the PCCI Education Task Force that was convened by PCCI, uh, of which I was a member, we said uh, one of the recommendations is that in the senior high school, senior high school program, let's let's separate out the tech voc livelihood track from the from DepEd and give it to TESDA. Because the people that sign up for the Tech Book Livelihood Track, they are they are uh, there because of the promise that after they finish senior high school, that they are employable and that they really are prepared to go to the world of work, which, as we know, is not the case at all. That that hasn't happened. No? Uh, so I think. Uh, TESDA would be better better equipped in, in preparing training programs, education and training programs that will really lead for them to get 
the competencies and qualifications in the world of work. And here, uh, we also advocate that uh, Tesla work closely with, with industry and the private sector uh, so that uh, really the, the training regulations that will come out from Tesla will, is really uh, able to, uh, to train and educate our young people uh, for the world of work. No? Uh, so basically this, this proposed law is fine. It, it, there is, a, there is a, the intent of really improving uh, our senior high school so that it can really meet the promise of employability or self-employability uh, when they graduate. And to me, the best agency or the best department that should should lead that exercise for those that are really going to senior high school because they would like to get the capabilities to be able to to get employment or to get self-employment uh, is Tesla, not the Department of Education, because the Department of Education's mandate is to prepare them to for higher education. Uh, in effect, they are there for the academic track itself, no? And in fact, better if they can really provide, as was discussed earlier, the, the higher levels of STEM track, no? Uh, rather than only the basic academic track. Uh, and you saw also the statistics earlier that only if a small number, uh, what, 30% 30, 30 plus, uh, of the senior high schools were able to offer uh, STEM track. No. So what about the other 65% uh, that don't have it? And then you have, you have students who would like to take the STEM track because they want to go into the sciences or in engineering. Uh, they are again disadvantaged. No. So if uh, DEPEN can concentrate really on the academic side, and on the tech book library track, uh, that can be taken care of by TESDA much better because they have the facilities and they have the teachers and trainers uh, for, for tech book livelihood. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Phoenix, for that, uh, for those uh, inputs. Um, Yes, uh, Mrs. Victorino. Mr. Chair, I would like to add also that the, the bill uh, is very favorable sa ating work immersion program kasi tataas po ang partnership natin. At the same time, hindi na po mahihirapan ng mga schools to look for work immersion venue. So uh, I think that will be very favorable on the part of, our, of, of the schools and the partners and also our uh, learners. Thank, thank you, you thank Mr. You. Chair. Yeah, because I, I, in my opinion, the soft skills you know, can be learned outside of the classroom. Uh, like, for example, uh, like I said, teamwork. You, know? uh, you, cannot, you cannot learn teamwork just by reading and, and, and learning the definition of teamwork. You have to practice teamwork. You know? uh, collaboration uh, is another soft skill. Again, you cannot learn that by just understanding the meaning of collaboration. You have to practice it. You have to learn it. You have to make mistakes uh, in terms of collaboration. So those are the skills that you learn when you immerse yourself in work. You know? That's why uh, in the bill, we proposed uh, very tight uh, uh, collaboration within industry and DepEd so that that, that work immersion uh, portion of the senior high school can also be strengthened. No, uh, from my experience, very few companies participation participate in the work immersion program. There's no, there's no nothing. It's in it for them. Eh? Uh, for them, it's just you know, nothing. You no, know? so um, that's why we incentivize that. Uh, whether it's going to be explicit or through the create law, uh, so that companies will line up and offer themselves to participate in the work immersion program because at the end it's also them who will who will benefit from that no if you have a trained workforce then i can hire those 
uh, senior high school as part of my company. If not, then the whole corp country will benefit because you have a you have a trained senior high school graduate workforce that can participate immediately in our um, uh, in our companies. No, so that is the logic why we put a lot of emphasis in the uh, work immersion program and admittedly the work immersion program is very important no, in, in the development of a complete holistic senior high school graduate yeah so with that any any more uh, last comments on the bill uh kung wala naman po, then uh, we would appreciate your position paper on the bill uh, please submit it to us uh, on or before uh, next Tuesday, which is uh, uh, May 2, um, one week from now. Uh, and we'll uh, conduct a technical working group. We'll announce to the body when will be the technical working group. But we'll pursue refining this bill through a technical working group. So with that, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you very much uh, to your inputs. And I really appreciate your candidness. Uh, um, we can we can only correct this uh, 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 this issue if we admit that there is an issue. You know? And uh, and I thank you for that uh, admission. Um, this bill is a work in progress. It's not. It's far from perfect. And uh, we will appreciate your participation in in refining the uh, proposed measure. All right. So thank you very much. This uh, hearing is hereby adjourned.